And just like that, we return to old traditions, once more gathering around the virtual table to play some D&D. Welcome to Legends of the Drowned Isles Campaign 2, The Great Confusion, which is more appropriate a title every time I run into any kind of technical issues or just try to think about things. Uh, I am uh, Mark the Encaffeinated One, I'm the GM and host and uh, General Dog's Body. I really now have to have some sort of, I don't know, maybe a cobalt general called General Dog's Body. <laughs> uh, but I have with me, thankfully, my players starting on my left with Pat. My name is Pat. I am playing Silas Marsh, who is currently wrestling with a suit of armor. Miss Murray, and I play Annie, who is, I forget actually what she was doing, <laughs> making sure people weren't hurt. My name is Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half orc cleric, and I'm pretty sure I was trying to help Silas with the armor. I think that's where we were. Well, well let's do a little bit of a recap uh, of what happened in the previous session. The group has been on a mission for Tassar to another plane to discover some of the remnants, perhaps, of a dead god to be removed from the world. Found themselves in more civilization than perhaps they thought, in a a under rock carved out old, um, well, establishment installation that seems to have been connected to the Argenti Sagax, that mysterious ancient organization of plane traveling, uh, uh, I don't know what we'd call them. We'll call them paladins because there's no other real word for it. Long, long lost, but who had unlocked the secrets of planar travel which is of interest to numerous people, including one of the people you found here, a, a floating eyeball, a gigantic beholder with a bow tie, one uh, Tau Zek Riva, who you last met in the D Nightmare Realm. After a somewhat uh, rough initial meeting, Tau wants to talk. In fact, he seems eager to talk. That may have something to do with the largely um, incoherent and or uh, non-communicative servants that he seems to have around them. Various uh, forms of one-eyed creature from the, uh, the humanoid, creepy humanoid uh, nothics to the um, kind of babbling, multi-tongued, somewhat uh, insane uh, eyeballs that have been referred to, I think, as goths, and another which seems a lot more serene and yet a lot more angry, uh, the angry floating eyeballs for which no name yet has been given. Uh, along with you is one uh, Dudek Bitterhorn, who you had met a long time ago and discovered that he too had been searching for the Argenti Segex, having proclaimed himself a member, at least in initial discussions, but uh, perhaps you have now come to realize that he's a historian and just really wants to belong to this organization, but really doesn't have any direct connection to it, aside from a ring of the Argenti Sagax and a relic, uh, an orrery, which he had shown you how the planes were organized in time and, well, not exactly space, uh, but how are organized in some other conceptual dimensions. He's along with you, and all four of you are sporting these strange little emblems given to you by Tassar, uh, a sort of a rigid cube of wire in which a crystal is suspended in the middle, uh, which uh, Dudek almost used to try to activate or interrogate or otherwise manipulate uh, certain spouts that seem to be around the room, which indicated some sort of elemental connections or some sort of connections. Elementals are what you've seen so far of fire. After some discussions, there was, from the strange, um, chaotic surrounding cloud that seems to face one end of this room, where, by the way, uh, Riva has constructed, or otherwise had built, a gigantic stone eyeball as a um, talisman or temple decoration to the being he refers to as Oculon, the great watcher, uh, who was responsible for his glorious transformation. From that cloud came uh, several 
strange elemental-ish beings, slightly silvery skin, I believe, um, who seem to be intent on doing harm. And after a battle with these creatures in which Tau took a considerable amount of damage, as did, I believe, Dudek at the time, uh, they are all vanquished save one. Uh, where Dudek, or sorry, where Tau has uh, turned it into a friend and is now proceeding with a silent interrogation. In the meantime, you've discovered a number of bodies around the area, um, bodies that seem to belong to long dead Argente Segex uh, members, each of which bearing a somewhat uh, disturbing. Um, uh, ailment, if you will, where one eye socket of the skull seems to have been scraped out or otherwise enlarged, and you found a few items of interest on them. And yes, uh, when last we left, uh, I believe that as people take somewhat of a, of a momentary rest, and as uh, Tao begins his um, interrogation, um, Silas, with the aid of Medric, is investigating one of the bodies in particular, uh, the body, which I don't think you learned his name, um, but it appears to be a dwarven, um, uh, a dwarven member of Sar uh, Argente Segex. And inside his armor, which seems to be mundane, uh, does appear to be a light uh, chain shirt with something attached. Um, where are... Where is Marie in all of this? Sorry, where is Annie in all of this? Marie is right there, and then right on my screen. Uh, you're muted at the moment. I believe I uh, honestly I forget, but I was making sure that everyone was okay. Well, uh, yeah. at least one of the companions that uh, Tao had was uh, pulverized by this these creatures. Yeah. Um, Two, I think, actually. And Dudek was badly hurt. Yes. I think actually you and Medrick at the end of it were in the middle because we ended just as the fight did. Yeah. Um, right. The armor wrestling was earlier and then we got attacked and then. Uh... Right. I remember uh, giving uh, Dudek some heals, though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I just forget what I was doing. So I will say that I'm kind of assessing the damage and figure, trying to figure out what's what happened. Okay. I won't necessarily return to the roll 20 at the moment. So if you don't see quite updated with the descriptions we have, don't worry about it too much. Uh, if we need to, I can certainly return to it. Um, Dudek is, it was pretty badly beaten in all of that, although he seems to be um, still vigorous and still uh, uh, more curious than concerned. Um, as he is also sort of walking up and trying to take a look at this this creature, which currently seems to be benign, uh, and looking at Tao with some um, reverence might be a word to use. Um, after a moment, uh, Tao does sort of exclaim with a bit of of um, frustration, "It is an exceedingly unintelligent creature." does not have a name, and I am somewhat at a loss as to which questions I should ask of it. And Tao turns to look at um, Dudek, but then his eyes mostly focus on Annie. Do you have any questions to ask our temporary friend? Um, Basically, I'm turning the interrogation over to you guys. Yeah. Excellent. So, he said that he wasn't able to get who he was working for from him? I didn't ask that question. I tried to okay. ask who he was. Who he was, okay. And he didn't seem to understand what I meant. Okay. And while uh, Annie is the one directly participating in this, Medric and Silas are not that far away. Mm -hmm. um, 
why don't both of you make uh, either, well, it's a sleight of hand challenge. You can either have one person do it with advantage or both of you can attempt to do it as you try to fish out whatever is stuck inside this this uh, this body, uh, this this armor, which by the way, the body itself has been long since uh, gone. So it's nothing more than a skeleton inside. Mm. I'll, I'll give Silas assistance because my sleight of hand, like my hands are really big to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's so sleight it's like of hand, I actually, have, I actually have a decent score in that. I yeah, and it's, so it's like, well, as... I think before you were trying to do kind of uh, a brute force and it just wasn't <clears> working <throat> and then things got interrupted. Even as it is, it's going to take you a while. You kind of get your hand on it uh, and it, it feels like... It's like some... the like... <laughs> Yeah, there's like, what are you grabbing onto? Is that a rib? Is that some sort of broken piece of the armor? You also kind of notice that the armor itself is, uh, there, it doesn't seem to have seams in the way you've seen some armor. Not that you've seen a lot. Um, it probably comes apart, but you haven't been able to figure out how. And on the inside, you manage to kind of grab onto whatever it is that seems to have been essentially uh, right around where the sternum is. It's that low. Um, and kind of grab onto something unusual, which you believe is the magical thing you had uh, detected before, um, but uh, haven't been able to pull it out yet. So, I only have full control of this creature for a little while longer, and I don't intend to allow him to attack me. So if you have um. questions, please... Make them known. I will voice his thoughts. Can you ask who sent them? Yeah, who 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 sent them, and from where? Are the two main ones? Mm. Its question, its answers are vague, but it seems to believe that it comes from all that is. Ah, uh, you can make a. Let's call it an insight check. Try to interpret or guide tech, uh, Tao as he's um, working through this answer. He's trying to translate a, a very intelligent <laughs> creature's thing. Well, there you go. Um, as you kind of probe uh, Tao a little bit about this, um, you come to the realization that it's talking about its home as the source of all things. That's probably what it's trying to indicate. And after kind of, I'm assuming, voicing this to Tao, ah, yes, that makes more sense. It is not an individual as I had assumed. And after a brief moment, yes, they come from something... It translates strangely. I would say the colony. But there is a word that they are trying to portray. It's an old word, amis. Yes. They are as much a hive mind as a hive being. Many of them. It did not think of itself as an individual and could not really express that, but your insight makes me understand them a bit more. They... Hmm... Hunger. That seems to be the motivation. But not as you mortals might eat or my gloriousness might consume something else. Wander the mists. Ah. And there are more of them. Oh. I think they are coming this way. That's not good. That's no. not good. Meanwhile, um, um, Silas, you've been kind of fishing this out. And you make a, um, make a perception check as you're... As you're fiddling around with this. Mm. Okay. Hey. As you're pulling on this this uh, item and trying to get it, you, you realize that it is sort of attached into 
the chain armor that's on the inside. And so it takes a little bit more effort to kind of pry it free because you can't pull the chain off as it is. But something you notice right away is this chain is perfectly strong. I mean, it is. it does not look damaged at all, and it's really, really light. Uh, and then mm. finally, the item itself comes free. Uh, and in your hand, you hold uh, what looks like kind of a... Um, it's like two four-pointed stars, one larger, one smaller, all with uh, kind of at at angles to each other. So it's like an eight-pointed star with four of them being larger than the other, which is what yeah, you are yeah. feeling on the hand. It has in the very center of it what looks like a uh, a clear blue gem, and there's a there's no chain. It, it actually literally attached to the inside of his armor. And kind of looking at the armor, you notice that the armor has multiple plates around that area that might have moved out of the way. But you don't know the mechanism for which that actually happens. Hmm. Uh, and this is, I think you still have Detect Magic active, I think. Or, well, no, the battle would have interrupted that. I think you had a... You uh, have... Well, no, I think it sticks around for 10 minutes, but I can put it back on again. It's an at-will thing. It, it is concentration, so um, I believe. No, um, I don't think Detect Magic is concentration. Okay, perfect. In any I case, could be wrong, though. This is, the source, this is the source of the magical energy. Um, I'd say this one has... It's a combination of magical energies. None of them are very clear anyway. But there would be uh, essentially um, uh, uh, abjuration magic and divination magic would be the, the strongest element to mm. come into this. Okay, well, we, yeah, we've got a bunch of stuff going on, so he's just going to pocket it for now. Okay. Um, and, and you did notice, again, the chain was extraordinarily light and strong, but yeah, wrap up the body at the moment. Well, I had a thought about that. Uh, Silas is going to reach into his pack and grab that potion of fire giant strength that he's been holding on to for ages. <laughs> okay. And he, he's going to drink that. And oh then my. okay. Suddenly I was the... strong. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, actually you down the that gain of 17 strength points. It it, oh, wow. it burns on the way down. It is like it is like a combination of the hottest cinnamon challenge you can imagine, as well as sort of uh, uh the the hottest, freshest tea that's made from some sort of pepper. So it burns, and you can feel the the burning elements just sort of run throughout your entire body. Uh, to the point where there's a little bit of, of redness underneath your fingernails, and it seems to, to flicker and glow just slightly, and you feel extraordinarily invigorated. Mm. Uh, they hear like this muffled, like, Hulk smash <laughs> off in the distance, and then he just sits down and tries to actually calmly take it apart, but now that he's got the strength to do it... Uh, Figure out how to remove it from the body without just shattering the stone pieces. So, Medric, um, you look over at your friend who has this strange mm -hmm. vigoration after drinking this potion, who's been struggling a little bit with the weight of the armor and this uh, dwarven body in inside. And then after he takes the potion, probably just lifts the armor up with one hand and starts turning it around, shaking it a little bit uh, effortlessly. Did I see him drink the potion? I don't think he was hiding it, so uh, yeah. Okay. Plus, you'd probably Damn. notice the effects of it. Um, and even feel a little bit of warmth coming from him right now. Um, his, you know, like skin temperature probably jumped up a little bit. Where do I get some of that? I don't remember where we got it, so I'm not sure. <laughs> but right now, I feel real strong. Um. um. Yes? How... The, the next question that I would have for the creatures, um, if they're done with the, the thing, would be how they got here. Hmm. They were guided through the outer mists. Interesting. It seems as though their beings can travel beyond the plains. There is a space beyond and between. And, uh, uh, 
Dudek would actually uh, speak up. The astral plane, I believe. Yes. They can travel through it. Although this one seems almost blind. They had to be directed. I fear now that we are a point of interest for the Amis. I will need to reinforce this place. Do you feel up to traveling? Directing that at uh, Annie. What do you mean traveling? There is a place not far from here. At least I think so. I have not been able to go myself. But it is a passageway to another one of these enclaves where I believe there exists something which can help us all. But I had hoped to take my time. It seems the time is not on my side. How long I mean... do we have until the next ones come through? These things have little regard for time. But it appears that this was, shall we say, a scout. And not having returned, their presence or absence will be noted as something of interest for the Amis. I think ready or not to travel, it's more of a have to. Yeah. I'm Silas, get your butt over here. <laughs> I'm not feeling very well up to this, but I can be of some assistance here. Plus, I have a lot of questions for um, our round friend, says uh, uh, how, Dudek. How, how, bad did, how bad does Dudek look at this point? Um, you can make a medicine check, but he does look still pretty wounded. Uh, he took a couple of really big hits. Where the hell is medicine check? It's plus five. 16. 16. Um, in, uh, in classical terms, which uh, I kind of do feel we should resurrect, uh, he would be bloodied, which means below half his hit points. Uh, he took up a couple of nasty hits. He's, he's kind of... You get the impression, and you probably have gotten this impression already, Dudek is an academic. Mm -hmm. uh, he has <laughs> some fighting skill. He displayed some odd fighting techniques while he was the fight was on. Um, but... He's an academic, and he's sort of compartmentalized the wounds at this point, where it's like, there's a, there's somebody interesting to talk to. There are so many things going on here, not even really paying attention to his wounds, but they are pretty extensive. Um, if okay, another he... round of those, if more of those get here, you're not going to be able to deal with those either. It's either go, go somewhere that might be safer or stay here where there will be danger. Oh, I never said it was going to be safer just nearby. I said maybe. If you wish, I'll I give him come with you, but I would relish the chance to speak more with this creature. There will be other times, but our alliance is new. And I would that you take one of my allies with you. I had sent one off already to go searching for this thing. It has not returned, which I can only assume there is some danger. But I would not risk all of my allies here. Are you going to be okay? I'll ask Tauzak. I have faced many adversities, and I believe that 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 watches shall watch over me. But do not delay. If I am overrun, this place will not be friendly to you. Well, be careful, though. You know, I'll give Judek a level 5 cure wounds. Okay. I um, don't think we should be leaving Judek here. No. So he gets 46 hit points. Oof. Wow. Some big numbers. That is that is a, an impressive number, and I typed it in the wrong wrong place. Uh, let's see. Too many 
46. I think that puts him up to... Uh, no longer bloodied, for sure. <laughs> it puts him up to full, actually. Nice. Um, was that supposed to be D20s? Wait, no, it was not supposed to be D20s. Never mind. Fuck, it was supposed to be... Oh. <laughs> 25. He gets okay, 25 hit points. That's a little bit more... I thought 46 was a bit high. <laughs> uh, let's see, so... I thought I said it properly. I did not. Um, that's not the right thing here. I gotta do math. Okay. That's where he was. And that's... 25? Okay. Yeah. He's, he's nearly, uh, well, he's doing better. He's not quite back up to full, but definitely doing better. Uh, and uh, as the flame flows over him, and then kind of the kickback flows back over you with no noticeable effect, um, you kind of hear a, a, a hum of appreciation from Tao. Very nice. But... Do you, al do you also need healing? I would not be disfavorable to your skills. All right, so he's going to get a level four hero wounds as soon as I can find my roll 20. And looking at, at Tao, he most definitely was actually more wounded um, proportionally. Oh, man. Tao got shit rolls, so he gets 16 all. <laughs> That's kind of funny for reasons I can't reveal. But um, the, and the flame once more kind of flowing over him. Interesting. You follow the sun. Yes. I do. Ah, interesting. I'm sure that he's jealous. I'm surprised he would allow such a thing to happen. You've gotten some independence from him. Nice. I do. Let us just say that all of the celestial beings do not get along. And sometimes they quarrel and are petty. Fortunately, Omicron is above all of this. Oculon? Oculon. Sorry, Mark was... Omicron. <laughs> brain kind of not working. All right. But you must go quickly. Which of my servants would you take with you? And he literally kind of parades three of the beings, um, one of each type, uh, in front of you. Um, there is a... Where did he go? Uh, oops, I went too far. There is Ish, there is Gosh, and there is Nelbo. <laughs> That's right. So... Um, Oh, uh, the creature starts to stress a little bit, and yeah, I want to go. His full attention to the one that he captured, which seems to be fading from the charm, and focuses all of his eyes on the being. <laughs> Bye. Um, <laughs> basically, the first one is paralyzed. Then it is, um, uh, well, the sequence of them, ending with disintegrate, turning it into nothing more than than. Uh, uh, pile of ash. Pile of ash. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. <laughs> um, these are fine specimens among my allies. This first one, um, pointing to the one, the one of the ones that's muttering a lot to itself. It has multiple eye stalks that seem to to focus in different directions, and you do hear it kind of give a constant mutter under its breath in multiple languages. This one's been called Ish. Ish is closer to Oculon, but has costed it has cost them to keep their minds so open so fully. They have also learned much from the dead. It will be useful to you uh, as a support. So long as its mind is clear. The other one which resembles it is younger, less experienced, but more eager to fight. And with that, the, the, uh, the green one 
which only has four eye stalks, the eye stalks kind of um, uh, almost mock a person getting into a fighting stance and kind of jabbing forward with different eyes. Um, Nulbo is very handy to have around in a fight and can offer some protection to friends. And finally, little Gosh. Gosh knows so much and can figure many things out. Has some minor skills with magic. But none of my three can speak as such. Gosh has some ability to speak to minds that are open. Not yours, as he, as Tao kind of focuses the main eyeball on Annie. Yours is hidden from this being. Through them, Oculon may see, and through Oculon I may observe as well. Not much to be able to speak to you, but I can let some of my concerns be felt through them. Who would you choose to be your helper? Well, the ability to communicate would be good. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, so so gosh, yeah, he has the ability to communicate through minds and has minor magic. Was there something else with him? Um, basically suggested that he's the most knowledgeable and the most clever. Okay. Nobo was the fighter type, and Ish was... I forgot. Support. Okay. Yeah. Um, and... Ish does speak in a, in a sense, but mostly it's multiple voices, multiple languages, and doesn't seem to follow coherence. Um, each of you, whatever languages you, you speak, even some of the more concerning ones, like Infernal, um, you do hear words you recognize. They do not have the same uh, Infernal um, consequence that a true Infernal being does give to them. It's like they're saying a word in each language in a sentence type thing. Except the sentences don't make any sense. Yeah. It's like they're talking actually about five or six different things at the same time, all interwoven. And it feels impossible to follow, not least of which because it goes into multiple languages. Even many <laughs> you do not recognize. Um, I think Silas, um, do you have yes. the ability hmm. to communicate with sea creatures? Was that something that, that happened? No, uh, he cast tongues at one point when we first got in here. And so he could hear what it was saying in actual full sentences. Right. But in and I general... believe I, uh, as a general thing, uh, I, once per day, I can try to talk to snake like creatures. Okay. okay. You actually would hear then some things that sound like, uh, like snake responses, which makes almost no sense to you, but yeah, um, you recognize it. I think Annie, you were going to jump in there. You're muted at the moment, if that makes a difference. I mean, I don't have much of a preference. So really, it's... Because any one of these, it's basically... They're basically there to watch at the end of the day. They might yeah. help a bit, but... Like, ultimately, they're there to watch. Um, I think Gosh might be a good idea though because the ability to communicate and they might know what's going on mm -hmm. like if we find something they might might know what it is yeah he's probably not very tanky but hopefully we don't get into any situ situations where we need a tanky person <laughs> if we do then i'm up i guess <laughs> Uh, 
Um, while they're discussing, discussing this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Silas isn't there. So uh, Silas is all just... of this. It's, there's not that much distance away. Mm. He's very focused on the armor. Okay. It's um, defied um, him. Let's make a roll on that to, to finish up or to hopefully finishing up that, uh, that, that bit. Um, I need to bring up a character anyway here. Um, I'm open to proposals as to what you feel might be uh, an appropriate role. Um, I will say you'll have advantage on the role because the strength essentially allows you to do this with no, you know, you can mm. you can turn this thing upside down as if you if you wish. There's no issue. I mean, like juggle stone armor pieces. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it could just be athletics. I mean, it gives him a 25 strength, so he'd go from a 0 to a plus 7. That sure. would be higher than any of his other applicable scores. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and make an athletics roll at advantage. Oof. Wow. Uh, plus no, 7. That's not a plus 7, is it? Yeah. So okay. that's a 19. <laughs> okay, that's much better. <laughs> um, so yeah, as you're kind of moving it around, describe how, how um, Silas is attempting to unlock this puzzle. Just by sheer brute force, essentially? Uh, no, he's, uh, he's looking at more like a, uh, a puzzle of where the latches are, like a puzzle box to open. Uh, the strength basically just gives him the ability to actually manipulate it and, uh, maybe put a little extra force in some of the spots. Okay. And appropriately enough, as you're kind of picking it up and able to examine it from different directions and different spaces... Um, you do realize that this armor is actually much like a puzzle box, appropriately enough, um, where there are no obvious latches, there's no hooks, there's no uh, no buttons, nothing like that. But instead, the the the, the stone plates can actually be uh, manipulated in such a way, and it takes you a while to kind of manipulate and change the different different uh, uh, plates around to move. The first thing you find is actually there is a way to manipulate the plates of the armor so that it opens up the space above where that. Um, where that amulet was to expose it. Um, and then that gets closed back in again. Um, meaning that the amulet probably has some use in that particular expect, uh, pros prospect. Mm. Um, but after a while, you do kind of figure out that it basically is a slide this, slide that. You hear a, a satisfying click, and the armor literally falls away uh, into multiple pieces uh, on the ground, revealing the... Uh, the um, skeleton now with the um, chain shirt on it. The armor itself was extraordinarily heavy too. Yeah. Um, well, he will uh, he may need to crack the shoulders on the uh, corpse, which he will apologize for, but uh, he'll try to slide the uh, the male shirt off. Now that the armor is free, it doesn't actually take that much effort, especially where you're strong enough to literally hold it up and kind of shake it appropriately. Uh, let's do a, a, a sleight of hand, though, to try to do it uh, without ripping the, the corpse in half. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, you're able to slide the, the chain off. It feels remarkably light, uh, almost like you're not carrying anything at all, um, and feels of very yeah. durable size, or very durable strength, I should say. Um. How is it compared to the one he's wearing? Because he's wearing a masterwork chain shirt, which is non-magical plus one armor class. Is it like that, or is it uh, different from that? Like, is it a different material, or it is? Uh, what was that made of? Do you remember? Uh, mine was just made of steel. Okay, it's just a regular shirt. It's just really well made. Um, it definitely seems like it's made of a different material. Um, it's it's remarkably shiny, despite the um, oh, that's why I was not finding it. Remarkably shiny, despite the uh, age. It apparently has not changed at all over over time. Uh, it appears to be finely made, um, but. Not necessarily as uh, any tougher than what you have right now. 
Um, okay. But it does not make a single sound as you jingle it around. Hmm. Ooh. Okay. Uh, now, Silas will look down to the south of the map. Did we do anything with the portal thing that was there, the mirror? Um, you opened it up, opened up the, the wooden cabinet around it, and then kind of left it open. Okay. Well, then he'll walk back to the group and... Uh, um, he'll go over to Annie and uh, hold up this shirt and say that uh, this may work for you and he'll shake it and show how quiet it is it's probably tougher than the armor you have what, what armor is it? because I have let me see here I think uh... it I think it's either Elven Chain or Mithril Chain. I don't know which, though. Okay. He hasn't actually studied it yet. But it'd be a chain shirt, I think. Um, where is proficiencies? Because I can go up to medium armor. So does it look like something that I would be able to wear. I mean, you can try putting it on. But like, no, knowing armor, does it look like something that I would be able, like, that I would know how to put on and wear properly? It, it looks like a simple shirt. It is a li little larger because it's built for a dwarf. Um, okay. But that would just mean that it, it lands a little longer. Actually, no, it wouldn't be a little longer. It'd be about the right size for you, actually. Uh, okay. Might hang a little loose, but that's about it. I mean, I I can try putting it on. And what are you currently wearing? Uh, I currently have studded leather. Okay. Is it just plain studded leather? I believe so. Yeah, just plain studded le leather. Okay, because I think if this is a chain shirt, that would give you a plus one AC over what you've got. And it doesn't give you disadvantage on stealth or anything. So it would be a slight upgrade. Silas will tell her it does not seem to be magical. Okay. Um, Annie, make a history check. Sixteen. Sixteen. Um, as you're going to handle the chain, first of all, there's this remarkable feature of it being extraordinarily light uh, and extraordinarily um, strong. Um, and it does occur to you that there are legends of royal armor where the armor itself is uh, not magical, but produced through magical means. Um, you're fairly certain that this indeed is actual mithril chain shirt. Um, furthermore, a normal chain shirt could actually be noticed. This could be worn under clothes and no one would know. Oh, nice. that's what I like to hear. So... Uh, it is a mithril chain shirt, which means its base AC is 13 plus your deck. So it is one improvement from studded leather, but is completely unnoticeable when you're wearing it. As long as you're wearing normal cloth clothing over over top. Wonderful. And that is medium armor. Perfect. Okay. If you are ready to go, Gosh can show you the opening. Hey, we're going? Did we find what we were here for? He looks at Annie. I mean, we we were here to look for clues of where our friends are. So far, mm -hmm. we haven't found anything. And those things might come back. And we'll probably be back soon. Okay. All we uh, found was danger. Are we heading out the portal that we found? Or are we leaving some other way? Silas doesn't know. 
so we're going to go look at other things, try to find other other things. What is it you are looking for here? None of your business. Um, he, he's aware that friends. we're looking for our friends. He's already mm-hmm. aware of that. Uh, but uh, where are we? Uh, how are we leaving? Where are we going? There is another portal near where you probably came in. I mean, this one over here? No. No, that is the Baroness's own portal. Ah. It would be unadvisable to arrive unexpected. I believe she has warded it. One of my allies did not return when I investigated. Um, Which one was it? Which ally, I mean? I did not bother naming that one. But what did it look like? Much like... It was useless Nolbo. enough that... <laughs> what was that? It was much like Nolbo. Less experienced, more eager. I thought it would be able to take care of itself, but the Baroness has some surprises. Um, Silas Silas will walk over to Annie and just whisper in her ear, the amulet pointed towards that portal. Like the amulet that's supposed to tell us what we're looking for. Um, well, as I recall, you were investigating the pillars that uh, they were building and found it gave some indication that the substance or parts of what they're using to build the pillars with um, was indicated. No, I think that was Annie that was looking at the pillars. Well, you specifically me. had the the device? Well, yeah, yeah well, you... there was that. But when I went to, uh, when I found the dead dwarf, uh the amulet was being pulled towards the portal. Okay. Um, I mean, do you want to deal with the Baroness and possibly get stuck in a ward? I don't know. I mean, if we're supposed to be here looking for stuff that the amulets tell us to look for, uh, is it okay to just go off with a beholder and ignore what we're doing? I mean, um, though those amulets are also supposed to be a, be a way to to get back home. So if it's pointing there, that's that's a portal mm-hmm. to our dimension. That's a possibility. Is... Oh my god! <laughs> what? Uh oh, being attacked by a mimic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but but yeah. So so, little... so it's supposed to also bring us home. So it could be pointing that that's the way back to mm. our dimension. That's a good point. No, Silas will follow wherever, uh, whatever Annie decides on. Because right now there's nothing here that seems to be pointing towards finding. Nothing else, no. Finding our people. Mm-hmm. If you are here looking for people, you are several centuries out of time, perhaps. The only people here have been long dead. If you're looking for something else, I might be able to help you. Silas doesn't say anything. He's just going to follow Annie. Yeah. I mean, I'm for, I am I, the player, I'm forgetting. Was there anything other than so one of the finding our people? Were, one of the things you were coming here for is Tassar had asked you because there were elements of the dead god that he believed were beyond these particular portals. And that's why he sent you here initially. The, okay. the evidence you've gathered so far from Silas's working around the pillars is that whatever was here of that kind, Tao has been using to try to create his own device. But hasn't been successful. As you arrived, it was actually failing. Yeah, because we are looking for ways to create a portal to our friends. Mm-hmm. This is why we were sent here. So what, if any of that, do you share with Tao? Silas isn't sharing a damn thing. Okay. Hmm. 
Maybe if you describe your friends, I can see if I've seen them. Or more accurately, I can ask Oculon if they have any knowledge of them. All right. So I'll just describe uh, Melora and also that she was traveling with a being called Graveler. I just like an earth, uh, a, yeah. an elemental of sorts. Yeah, his horn. Interesting. I will attempt to ask Oculon, but it may take some time. By the time you return, I should have some information. Perfect. And how do we come back here? If we take a portal, I mean. Which one are you taking, Gosh? Gosh yep. knows the ways. Yes. Okay. All right, that's good. All right. Um, having seemingly reached an agreement, um, there is a silent communication, it seems, between Tao and Gosh. Gosh goes scrambling up uh, the same way you came in, back up that hallway, uh, and then uh, climbs up the side of the wall and indicates that opening you'd found in the ceiling. You briefly checked it out before. It was unlocked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I looked out it. I almost got hit by a wave of elementals. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, indicates for you to open it. Um, Gosh does not look very strong on their own. Um, and clearly, um, at least Silas seems a lot stronger right now. It is uh, 10 feet up in the ceiling, mind you. Well, right, so why don't you get will, Silas a lift? Well, Silas will swallow another floating candy. <laughs> yeah. And then drifting. float up and, yeah, just grab the door, grab one side, and try to push it open. Okay. With the increased strength, I don't remember how long that lasts. I think it's an hour or so. Yep. Um, yeah, it, one it, hour. Easily, it easily moves aside. Um, still connected to the ceiling. It's one of those one of those uh, in sort of circular um, doors that has a pinion in one side. It just rotates around that. Um, and through it, you don't see anything at the moment. It's a bit of a, of a, of a blackness there. And even before, when you, I think when you'd stuck your head through, it was like sticking your head through some, some substance. Um, but uh, when it, uh, last time when he looked up, there were mountains all around. When you stuck your head through. Yeah. Yeah. But there, I may not have described it correctly, but there should have been essentially like a barrier, which is okay. Uh, like when you've experienced each time you've gone through one of these portals, there's, you can't perceive the other side. Um, there is sort of a mystical shadowy barrier um, that doesn't offer any resistance aside from that sort of transition point. But as soon as it's opened, uh, Gosh kind of crawls across the ceiling and climbs in. Um, Silas will stick his, uh, his feet through and then... Uh, hang from his feet, reaching down to the others. Like, come on up. Okay. Make a I'll jump up and grab Silas's throw. hand. Make a constant that? saving throw. As you feel the pressure of the, of the portal wanting to pull you through or reject you from one side, it doesn't seem to like the idea of you just staying on one side or the other. I get a 15 with okay. my zero con. Um, you feel the, the sort of pressure uh, closing in on you. You take one point of force damage as you feel like the portal kind of trying to eject you one way or the other. Uh, but otherwise, you're you're stable for the moment. Who's up first? Metric? I'll go. Okay. <laughs> Grab Silas's hand. Yep, it's like grabbing a solid piece of rock because he's very, very strong at the moment. I definitely uh, need one of those potions. And you haul him through? <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, how high do I get yeeted? <laughs> I don't know. How, how how much force do you use when you pull him through? Hmm. <laughs> well, he'd probably be bracing to pull real hard because he's not normally strong. So, yeah, he probably uh, probably yanks uh, Medric through quite quickly. <laughs> right, let's, let's have a dexterity saving throw for Medric then as you fly out the uh, other side. And find yourself in a barren... In a, a barren valley between large mountains of rock. Eighteen. Yeah, you're. I land. 
you're able to come not super gracefully but safely it's not exactly the the superhero landing but it's pretty close to the three-point landing <laughs> uh, nobody's there to see you except for gosh who's kind of just watching crouching down on all fours with long spindly limbs with a single eye its mouth I'll look and jagged at, teeth just kind of looking at you with curiosity i'll look at josh it's like you, you saw that right that was pretty badass <laughs> a, a long slow blink and then a sort of turn of the head and nod I'll take that as a yes. Um, who's next, Annie or uh, Dudek? I'm going to push Dudek up because I don't trust him to, to not not come. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Um, Dudek uh, kind of bends his knees a little bit and leaps through the hole. Um, he seems quite spry. Where are we here? Um... Yeah. Uh, oh, he doesn't have that. Sorry, it was somebody else that had that. All right. In this case, uh, he will leap up and and uh, grab onto Silas's hand. Um, yeah, Silas will take more care this time because Medrick wasn't supposed to fly quite that far. <laughs> <laughs> Dudek is surprisingly light on his feet, even though he's a compact dwarf. Uh, as he comes flying out of the hole, uh, Medrick, you notice him kind of pivot in midair and land quite comfortably on his feet. What an unusual well, That was also place. badass. Um, he's going to dust his, his, uh, his uh, self off. And Annie's the last through? Yep, and I'll jump up. Okay. Okay. And yeah, same thing. He'll just, uh, I, he'll just move up to the hole. Okay. Instead of trying to throw her through. Yep. All right. Um, and all three of you find yourself on this sandy, rocky kind of pla- kind of uh, valley. It extends and curves off into the distance. Overhead, you see uh, uh, what looks like a gray-brown sky. Um, and at times, it's even hard to tell whether it's sky or just more rock. But it's far enough away to serve both. Um, all of you make perception checks. I'll have one for uh, Dudek as well. Well, and that's with a plus five. <laughs> yeah. Dudek like is being... kind of shocked with everything around him. Um, Twelves from uh, Annie and Medrick, and only a three from uh, Dudek. Dudek is, is just really fascinated with everything, and he's, he's just sort of kicking the rock and trying to imagine if it's a different kind of rock or whatever it is. Um, uh, Silas, as you're kind of looking around, getting your bearings once more, you see motion just on the edge of your vision way up high um, as something long and um, kind of purplish um, sort of moves through the sky. Um it's hard to tell distance from this point of view, um, but if that is truly above the mountainside, it would be quite massive to be seen from here. It looks not entirely unlike a long worm. Hey, guys, look at that. What? And as you notice one, you notice a few others. Oh, look, there's lots of big purple worms in the sky. Are those the same worms that were in the uh, funhouse? As you, house, back on it, as you think back on it, um, these would be the same kind, maybe? But those were small. These are much, much bigger. And as you kind of watch them a little bit, um, you notice that they are, in fact... Well, it's hard to describe, but as it interacts with the top of one mountainside, it seems to cleave through the top of that mountainside, leaving a hole in it. Yeesh. And you can kind of hear the distant rumbling as the, the world kind of shivers from it. Well, let's stay away from those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Gosh kind of uh, moves down. He's got this this rambling, almost all fours gait, uh, moving a little bit sideways, these long gangly limbs, and kind of moves on down the, uh, down the valley. Um, kind of stops and gestures for you to follow. I'll follow him. Um, and at this point, my weapon, my 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 hammer and shield are out, just in case we get attacked by something. Okay. 
Um, you do occasionally hear um, the sound of rumbling rock. Also overhead, now still not entirely certain if it's sky or overhead, but you do see what looks almost like a moon, but smaller, that sort of lazily drifts across the, across the sky, a large gray-brown rock. Um, one of those large worms collides with it, and it breaks in two, slowly drifting apart in the sky. The worm or the rock? The rock. Um, up ahead of you, as you round one corner, you see the valley splits off into what looks like three different directions. Um, there's sort of a straight ahead direction, and then there's two offshoots that almost look as though it was crossed over by something. Um, not necessarily straight across, but it does look like a choice of three. Um, Gosh seems to be contemplating the three of them, looking back and forth between all three. Uh, Silas he was supposed to, to know the way. Yeah, Silas will say into, into its head, which way now? It turns and twists and observes you with its eye, kind of impressed with the, with the uh, mental message. Um, and you receive a, 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 a message of its own. Um, it's not sentences so much as an impression. Um, there are two paths which seem to show evidence of recent travel. And it gestures kind of physically as well as telling you in your, in its, in your mind. Um, you can see that there are scrapes on one and there is gouges on another. Um, looks as though something heavy moved uh, relatively recently along one path, and then something with sharp spikes moved along. It's indicating the ones with sharp spikes and then points to its own fingers. Um, at that point, the wind seems to kick up. It's, it's like the wind, except the evidence is not from air moving so much as small pebbles and stones moving all around you. Um, it feels as though it's going to gust in a second. Each of you makes silence. A... Yep. Is there anything like we can hide behind to avoid the wind or most rock smaller out stones along the along the sides? Okay. Silas. Uh, Silas looks around to see if there's another charge of elementals coming. Okay. Um, make a perception check, and all three of you make a con uh, a Constitution save, please. Oh, 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 wait, Constitution, I, that's good. Okay, that's a 16 for Danny. 21. Your perception, 21, okay. Yeah. And once again, I'll make one for Dudek. And a natural one. Uh-oh. Oh, Dudek and a natural Five if it's against magic. Um, it is not magical. But as you're kind of looking around, um, it is as though the world itself is kind of shivering, and it is the reaction of that shivering which causes this sort of weird dust storm. But as the dust and rock settles on your skin, it seems to drain the life from you. Uh, too many windows. Um Yep. You take one point of cold damage. That's only for Silas. The others of you manage to kind of kind of wrap yourself uh, a little more tightly. Um, keep track that you have failed once, uh, Silas. Um, I don't like this. <laughs> the uh, uh, yes, um, Gosh moves forward into the. Uh, the place where he saw the scrapes and kind of gestures for each of you to follow. Do you follow? I will follow. Yep. I'll also follow. Okay. Um, Gosh starts running as if seeing something far ahead. The light here is strangely ambient. It's not coming from anywhere in particular. There is no sun overhead, no moons. There is no light in this barren landscape, and yet you can still see. 
Um, maybe light reflected from some other source, you're not sure. But somehow, Gosh seems something, sees something a little bit more than the rest of you and sprints ahead. Um, and is soon around a corner. I'll look behind us as I follow him. Okay. Just glance behind us, not look, obviously, but it's like, is there anything chasing us? Uh, make a perception check. Okay. Silas will just sprint. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep pace with, with Gosh. Okay. Perception. Nat 20. Nice. Wah, wah, wah. Um, as you look beyond and the sort of strange curving nature of the valley that you're in, um, you do make out just around the bend where you were. It does look like there is a riotous storm there. You did not hear it um, and you would not have noticed, noticed unless you looked behind. Uh, it looks almost as though it is coming up this tunnel behind you. But uh -oh. it's around the corner. Run. And all of you break into a sprint. Um, and almost run into Gosh as you round the corner. Um, Gosh seems to be um, examining carefully two bodies that are on the ground. Um, one appears to be uh, much like himself. Uh, a single-eyed um, creature with long spindly limbs. This may be one of the servants that... Uh, Tao said that he'd sent out that did not return. Uh, it looks as though the body has been shot through with multiple holes. Uh, you can see that pretty easily from a distance, but there is no evidence of anything sh shifting through it. Um, Gosh seems to be examining tenderly that body. The other body uh, seems to be a humanoid, a little taller than... I think a little taller than all of you, actually. Annie was the tall one, I think we discovered before. Um, Medrick. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say Medrick, and I thought, no, I was wrong somehow. No, he's, right. he's a half-orc. Yeah. True, true. I think he's there, like 6'6". Six, six. I forget where I wrote it down. Well, still a little taller than Medrick as well, actually, or would be that okay. tall. Um, dressed in similar armor to what you'd seen from some of the other Argenti Sagex. Um, not the stone armor that you just last examined, but there's something in the style of the way that they're they're uh, they're made um, that you're starting to get used to and can identify. Um, that body seems to be laid across the uh, pathway. Um, less of interest in the moment to gosh, but that may be some sort of sentimental reason. Medrick, having noticed it before, and you kind of glance back, you can see that that storm is not far from approaching you. It'll be there. I'll tell my friends. Back few seconds maybe okay. guys there's a storm move move i will and I'll kind of behind us grab um i will grab the corpse that it, like how big is the corpse that gosh is looking at um it's relatively short to be a little shorter than most dwarves but it is kind of curved back and long-limbed um if we were to stand straight up it would actually stand probably almost eight feet tall, but it's, it doesn't stand okay. straight up and it's fairly thin and a little desiccated at the moment. I'm going to grab Gosh by like what looks like the arm okay. and, and point at, at the storm and start running. Okay. Um, I will follow. <laughs> okay, Dudek is also kind of catching up with you. And Dudek actually stops and looks down at the other corpse. Um, waiting for a moment. Um, Gosh also kind of looks hesitantly between the corpses. Um, but then passes it over. Uh, Silas and Medrick, you're already starting to take off? Yep. So, um, so this eight-foot a corpse that's a creature or a person so the the, the larger thinner one is a nothic like uh like okay. uh gosh is the other one seems to be just a tall humanoid not yep. eight feet uh, high, but uh... yeah uh silas is going to grab the other corpse as we go and uh okay with his 25 Wait, silas has giant and... strength i forgot uh -huh. <laughs> and he's uh he's grabbing that and sprinting 
Uh, all right. Yeah, because um, dude, Dudek is is not going to want to leave that corpse. <laughs> nope. Also, I want to search it for more magic items. We've been getting good with these guys so far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. You grab it, and uh, Dudek kind of, in that abstract way, again, that he's caught as an ap- academic, he's looking at it and is sort of watching it as moving, not really registering that you've picked it up. And then He gets of, a slight uh, shove in the direction of away from the storm. <laughs> Um, and he gets yeeted into the storm. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, Gosh seems to be digging at something at the corpse. Um, but the three of you, uh, four of you actually, uh, proceed quickly around the corner. Um, it, I, I was trying to get Gosh to come. Oh, um, right. if yes. he's digging at something, I will try to take a look and see if I see what he's digging at. Yeah, is okay. he digging at the ground or the corpse? He's looking like he's trying to pull something off the neck of the corpse. Some, some, some sort of, some sort of uh, uh, band of what looks like tiny little multicolored rocks. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I will try to get it. Well, actually, uh, if the other thing seconds behind us, Silas will just grab the other thing from like <laughs> behind the head and drag it behind us as he goes. Okay, <laughs> you're definitely strong enough, but this is also really a, a dexterity, dexterity thing. So I will have you make a dexterity sure. check. Uh, acrobatics would be appropriate if you want to include that to try to balance. Can, it can because... you throw it onto your other shoulder? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, uh, yeah. Let's see. What did you get? Uh, I can't see. I got a four. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is going to slow you down. Uh, you can certainly do it, but it is going to slow you down. Um, sure. Uh, Gosh goes striding, and in fact, at this point, you kind of see that it goes on all on all fours and is moving like a. a Kind of like a weird canine with its long limbs. Yeah, going slow is better than not going at all. It's true. Yep. Um, seconds after you leave that space, you can hear now as it gets really close, just the faintest of whispers of what must be a, a violent wind because you can see that the ground is now charred up a little bit more. Um, as you round the corner again, uh, you see, uh, well, two pathways. Because you're in the lead, which pathway do you take, or what do you what do you look for, or you make any decisions whatsoever? I th- uh, do I see a difference between the two paths? Like he was, he pointed at spiky imprints in the ground and at his claws. That seemed that, to... that would probably be because oh the other creature yeah yeah, yeah. something I have it now um, yeah I mean, what's the difference between the two paths? Uh, you can take a moment to look, or you can just randomly pick. Well, we need to know which one we're going down. So at this point, Silas will stop and uh, send a question to... Uh, Where do we go? <laughs> uh, yeah, to the Nothic, uh, saying, which way? Left or right? Okay. Uh, that puts it on it to make the decision. And uh, it will do a perception check then. Uh, and it indicates the right-hand hallway. Rather urgently. You're not sure okay, why right it's there, but it just chose one. Yep. Well, that's, that's where we're fine. going. <laughs> okay. Drag, drag, drag. Um, each of you kind of pile into that hallway. You discover that it is indeed a small cave. The back end of this cave looks as though uh, it has been scraped heavily, uh, as though it was not dug so much as chewed out. Uh, I will have you all make a con- uh, concentration uh, constitution save. Natural, Natural 20. 20. Nice. Dude. Nine. Womp. All right. And two deck. That was weird. They both get the same thing. Um, but it is enough except for Annie. Uh, and Annie takes... Oof. Six points mm. of uh, force damage, basically. As you're caught just oh, by the oh, edge of oh, the storm. Oh, force damage? Yes. I believe you have a thing against that? I think I do. Resistance Una to momento. From a ring, I think. Brooch of shielding. That's it. So s- several small pebbles start 
uh, pummeling towards you, and many of them are sort of slowed and fall right next to you instead, um, which I think is resistance to force damage, probably. Yeah, resistance to force and immune to magic missile. There you go. So three, three, uh, three. points of, of uh, force instead. Um, as you find that the storm rages outside um, and seems to be holding fast for a moment or two. Uh, however, you found a moment of respite that came down to a random roll from uh, the other one. Um, That's good. This... Yep. Go ahead. You just said that's good. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't hear that. Um, do I need to note that fail down? You de do need to note that fail, yes. Okay. Um, but you have a moment to yourselves. The storm doesn't seem to be abating for a while. What do you do? If anything. Probably just the chat through. amongst ourselves. Yeah, okay. examine the corpses for sure. Okay. Who's examining which corpse? Uh, I'm going to turn on my uh, magic site again and uh, take a look at, uh, I guess, both of them, actually. I'll take a look over at the neck thing and then search the other body. Okay. Are any of you else, anyone else looking at them? Gosh, yeah, I was I'll... trying to get the thing off the other one's neck, so I'll try to get it off for, for Gosh. Okay. I'll assist Silas with uh, looking at the corpse. All right. Uh, Dudek will also take a look. He's not really good at perception, but he will take a look. So a perception check from uh, from Silas with advantage. Oh, not 20. Hey! Okay. Um, one thing that Silas does note right away is that necklace is indeed made of magic. Uh, it seems to be... Oh, I always forget the names of magic. I should have that up. Um, uh, transmutation magic. Um, but the corpse just looks like a corpse. It's very, very dusty. Um, you're not exactly sure what species it is because it looks like whatever flesh was here was not in the normal way decomposed so much as flayed off, probably by the winds that you just encountered. Uh, well, I'm glad we found this cave. <laughs> Dudek uh, reach, uh, kneels down beside the corpse um, and kind of brushes at the front of the chest plate. Um, this is odd. And points to four gems that seem to be embedded in the chest of the of the uh, the person. If I'm correct, I think this is a hobgoblin. Not what I would have expected, given the stat status of the Karovenkin Empire. They tend to be somewhat isolationist, but maybe in the times past, when the Argenti Sagex were a true thing, they attracted people from all over. Uh, but you see here, um, on the chest there are four stones. Uh, one appears to be brown, one appears to be blue, one appears to be red, and one appears to be white. Um, if any Do the of your, colors mean anything? If you're trained in arcana, you can make a roll. Uh, arcana or religion, actually. Okay. Um, also, look here and here. and um, Dudek points to several places in the armor which appear to have been pierced through by something. I'd like to roll. go back to, as a player, flashbacks to campaign one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can certainly I forget, do so. I forget their, their name, but like, oh. Mm, yeah, the little monk guy. Oh. Um, oh, uh. It's on the tip of my tongue. I know which one you're talking about. Renwick. Yeah, Renwick. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, Renwick and the Glompkins. <laughs> and the Glompkins, yes. Which is a great band that surely will in the far future be running around Domitia. Renwick and the Glompkins. <laughs> um, 
when Dudek points that out um, and kind of points to the similarities that are in the other body, um, I, I'm not sure exactly what it means, but it's as though something exploded through them or something. I'm not sure what they found. Um, there's Did no... the colors of the stones mean anything? or? Uh, so you got a 16 on what kind of yeah. roll? Religion. Religion and a 17 on Arcana. Um, I think uh, the perspective that Silas would have on this is there is something fundamental. There are a lot of theories about the universe and its con- composition. Um, one of the theories is the theory of elements. And earth, water, fire, brown, blue, red. The white is a little bit ear- weird, but that could be air. Um, so it may be a representation of elements. Um, but without more context, it's not quite clear. Okay. Um, for... Um, for... Medric, you come to a different conclusion because there are a number of fundamental gods. There's Tandu of the earth. There is or was a god of the water. There is Ignis of fire. But white is strange because there isn't really a correspondence that you're aware of. Okay. Uh, and the gems do not seem to be magical. They do not. Okay. Seems to and be you, you said the... on the surface of the, of the, or embedded within the armor. And you said the corpse that looked like Gosh had similar stones? Uh, no, it had a, a, okay. a necklace around its, around the neck and it had small stones. They don't seem to correspond to the same, same colors, however. Okay. But as uh, Silas would be able to verify, it is uh, some sort of transmutation magic. Gotcha. Um, well, you do, yep. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, I mean, unless uh, Gosh beats him to it, he'll take the necklace off the thing. I'm think, helping Gosh get it off. Already. Okay. Yeah, Annie. Uh, it's not that hard. Uh, it was a little caught up in the being itself, um, but with a, a calm, quick motion, um, it's not hard. There's no particular pressure in the moment either to do it. If you were going to be doing it while the storm was on, it was going to be a roll, but right now it doesn't have to be uh, as the storm rages just outside the cave. Uh, and you are able to remove it. Um, it it has a simp- what looks like simple leather um, with these stones embedded, but you, you're you familiar enough with, with uh, items of, of magic that they, be, they become much more durable when magic is infused in them. Um, but otherwise, it would not be that unusual as just a fancy choker okay uh silas will will tell any uh beware that necklace has some sort of transmutational magic in it translated to non-magic speak it's magic it's it's some sort of magic that will change the wearer in some way Maybe that's why it was so big, or maybe it does something else. I can't. I don't know until I actually study it. But uh, you may or may not want to give that to Gosh. I mean, is Gosh still trying to get it? No, uh, Gosh is kind of just watching everyone and kind of looking. Well, happy is probably the wrong word given the <laughs> strange features, but looking contented that you took the interest in that as well. And then turns its attention back to the one that okay. the, to the corpse itself. That it it's you can make an insight check. Because my gut gut question is to ask him if if he knew it, if he knew them. Okay. Um, you kind of it's hard to read these creatures. They don't have the same sort of facial makeup, and honestly, when you're looking straight at it, it's kind of hideous. Um, it's got a very long jaw with, with uh, terrible-looking teeth and this one enormous eye. Um, but as you ask that question, you just you you see it kind of shake its head up and down. And then it looks over at Silas, and in Silas's head, 
um, you hear Ekish. Which you feel like was a name. Mm. He says his name was Ekish. Ekish. The storm seems to rage outside for some time. Five minutes go by. Then another ten. Are you going to take any active time or during this? Anything you want to accomplish when you feel like you've got a bit of time? Uh, let me check something. Do I still have that spell slotted? As in, did I remember to change it out if I didn't? The detect magic does fade from you. You still have the strength, however. Uh, Silas? Hey, uh, Silas, could you ask him if I were to... Uh, I'm the only one he can't talk to. <laughs> okay. I'm just wondering, if I were to temporarily, like, if I were to ca cast Speak with Dead, could, could he question the corpse? Who are you asking that to? Just thinking out loud to myself as a player. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, hey Silas. Or wait, no, I'll, I'll think to uh, Gosh and ask him that, like, if I were to animate him temporarily, could you speak with him? You could ask him three questions. At least I think that's how it works. Or is this something we would find worthwhile? I'll ask Annie and Silas. I mean, we know it's dead. We know that there's those worms. We know that there's a wind. The, that's causing damage. I don't know if it's worth you using up more of your magic. We don't know how long it's going to be before we get back. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, if it would be better used in another manner. What would you want don't... to ask him, anyway? How he died. Oh. If well, that would be he's seen our friends, which is unlikely... I don't think it would be worth it just with deduction of wind that causes ouch. Yeah. And giant worms that look like they cause ouch. Yeah, I'd rather <laughs> not find out how much the ouch is from the worms. <laughs> I think it'd probably swallow us whole. Um, Silas is going to ask for the uh, the choker for a second. Oh, yeah. For a minute. And he'll cast uh, Identify. Okay. Uh, I get my slots back fairly quickly, so. Um, the magic uh, reads to you pretty clearly. Um, it is a an object meant for protection by adapting the person to the circumstances. Uh, in formal terms, it is a necklace of adaptation. Yep. Uh, it is an item that requires attunement, but while wearing the necklace, you can breathe normally in any environment and have advantage on saving throws made against harmful gases and, va uh, and vapors, uh, nice. as well as uh, inhaled poison, uh, poisons and the breath weapons of some dragons. Ooh. So that all yep. occurs to you. It does uh, feel, it reads old. Like it reads like a very, very old item. Um, partially from just the way that it was made, but also just um, the, the magic itself is, is, is weirdly vintage, if that's a word for this. Um, yeah, he'll say this uh, will help you survive in uh, damaging and uh, atmospheres it will help you breathe them if whoever wears it but it requires that you attune to it um, and then he'll pull out whatever the small thing that was under the corpse two sessions ago was <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, uh, he'll leave the double star thing for now but he'll look at the older thing and he'll identify that as well 
Okay. I have no more attunement slots, so y'all can have at her. Yeah, uh, Silas is up too. He has like four attunable items. I have no attunable items. <laughs> the, Here you uh, go, uh, Joker. Um, cool, thanks. The amount of time kind of involved in this and the amount of the raging of the storm that does not seem to abate, um, we'll also call this a short rest. Okay. Um, the item that you pulled from beneath the body uh, is an amulet. It kind of looks very, very strange, and it's all completely encased. Um, it's It looks, for our modern eyes, like a pocket watch. Um, but you cast Identify, and you realize, and also you have a chance now to even take a closer look at it, and you can hold it up to your ear, and you hear a faint ticking sound inside. Um, kind of regular, again, like a po pocket watch, which I've not quite decided if they have pocket watches in this particular uh, time frame, uh, probably not as very, not very common anyway. Um, but, um, you realize that this, the rhythm, the rhythms, it's like polyrhythm of the different ticking inside. Um, as you look around you and you see people even doing mundane, mundane things, it feels almost as though, um, you could time anything you needed to do with exactly what other people are around you. It feels like you could time yourself properly. Formally, this is a clockwork amulet. It does not require mm. uh, uh, attunement. Um, it is uh, powered by, by other planar magic, which you're not familiar with. Um, you just get the sense that it's not from uh, the prime material plane. Yeah. And while you're wearing this and you uh, make an attack wearing this amulet, you can forego rolling the d20 to get a 10 on the dice. That can be done once until the next dawn. So if you're fairly certain in your bonuses, you can do it without having to roll. Mm. Yeah, Silas will put that on for a minute. And actually, once we're done the short rests, uh, he gets a slot spec, but he'll use another one to identify that double star. Or that, sorry, the eight pointed star item. And as you take some sweet look, rolls from a hit dice, getting some some hit dice back, figured you might need a, a little bit here and there. Um, as you examine that, it it almost feels as though you fall into the gem at the very center, not in a threatening way, but more that you feel the sheer force of of energy behind this emblem. Um. You feel like uh, the emblem is connected somehow to godly powers. Uh, and it offers its protection. It is purely a protective item against those who are being attacked. It does not seem to make judgment on who's attacking whom, um, but does seem to offer that. Formally, it is a guardian emblem, an uncommon item that requires attunement by a cleric or a paladin. Um, you do know that this is some sort of um, representation of a deity, but you aren't sure which one. That seems to be not part of its magic. But you can tell that it's connected somehow to deific magic. Um, it has three charges. When you or a creature you can see within 30 feet suffer a critical hit while you're wearing uh, uh, either armor which this is attached to or shield which this is attached to, you can use your reaction to expend one charge to turn a critical hit into a normal hit. Uh, all charges are re regained at dawn. Um, yeah, Silas will hand this to uh, Medric and say, uh, we need to get this attached to your armor. Uh, it will help protect you from attacks. Cool. It feels like it's my birthday. Yeah. Like first the necklace and now this. <laughs> also, it requires attunement. So here you go. Awesome. Um, also, I say it can only be used by holy people. Uh, so maybe there's some way you could test if someone was holy or not by trying <laughs> to get them to use it. 
but uh, <laughs> no, it, I mean, it, it looks like a sun, so I'm presuming it's probably something from Ignis. Okay. Um, um, you both can make religious religion rolls as you as you kind of examine and think about it. I sure will. As soon as I can figure out what my religion score yeah. is, I think it's two. Yeah. Where did uh, son of a? So it, it, it rolled oh. advantage for you, I guess. Is the but do you actually have advantage on religion rolls? Oh me? No. Okay. No, that's just the normal setup. It always rolls two things. Okay. Uh, I if I have eight. a if I have religion like picked as a skill, do I have advantage or no? <laughs> not as a, that was not, as, not an advantage, no. But um, Correct. you have a proficiency, so it's just why you get a bonus to it. So, but unfortunately, uh, a total of four. Um, sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be Ignis. It's being be an older symbol if it is. Um, you've never seen one quite like that, but you haven't seen all the symbols of Ignis. Um, for you, Silas, I'll ask him later. Yeah, for you, Silas, it's like, sure, whatever. <laughs> could be stars, but, sun. Hmm. And maybe thing. get a little distracted yep. by thinking, well, geez, maybe we should have some symbols. <laughs> maybe, maybe uh, Zagwatha or the mother needs to have a, a symbol or two of her own. You've already got a symbol. We made it into a statue. It's true, but it's not not that portable. <laughs> portable god magic sounds good. You're right. I have to mass produce tiny mother symbols. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, so how do I attach it to my armor or my shield? I'll just like touch it to the shield, see what happens. And uh, when the shield, well, okay. So I'm assuming it, it, once my shield goes on fire, if this is the sun and if it, if it is a bigness, then it should be fine, right? Yeah. Well, it might be better to put it on your armor than your shield, because you might not, uh, you might drop your shield or something, but your armor is going to be on you. Can it be removed afterwards? Because I did commission an armor from a uh, wish. <laughs> it, well, you do know that oh, Prince Silas was able to remove it from the other armor, too. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll put it on my armor, see if it sticks. <laughs> um, it, it does weakly stick right now. Are you going to try to take the time now to attune it? You did already take the, the short rest. Okay. Um, you, but it would take another hour if you wanted to attune something. Is, is the storm still raging? It seems to have not abated much. Yeah, might as well do that now then. Okay. Attach it securely so that it doesn't fall in the middle of combat or running or storm. Okay. Um. So another hour will pass. Medrick has already declared that he needs an hour to get used to this. Is there anything else happening during that hour? I don't think so. Can I take a look at the... You said that the back of the cave seems to be seem to be like bite marks more than dig marks. Yep. Is there anything else interesting at the back of the cave? Uh, make an investigation roll. <laughs> Make a dexterity saving throw. Uh -oh. Ah! If I can open the right tab. I've got to scroll in the right direction here. Okay. 14 with a plus 9. <laughs> that was a bad Oof. roll. Oof. <laughs> you quite literally did not see it coming. However, 14 is enough. Um, as you're kind of poking around and you see that there's an oddly shaped rock and a few other weird shaped crystals, um, you um, find what looks like a weirdly rounded crystal or a really rounded rock. And you're kind of like, huh, is this something? As soon as you touch the rock, uh, it explodes outward in large uh, stone spikes. And you quickly drop it, so you only take five piercing damage. And as soon as you drop it, it shrinks back down to a normal innocuous looking rock. And it does make a bit of a sound, uh, kind of a, lar a large clacking sound, both when it first goes off and then when uh, Annie quickly drops it. And there are some choice words from Annie. <laughs> uh, is everything okay? <laughs> Choices were made. <laughs> you just get a bunch of swearing. <clears throat> what did you find? 
a thing that exploded when I touched it. Really? Damn. Um, how big is it? About the size of a football. Hmm. Let's see what I have in the bag of holding. Because I'm curious about this. That is... Hey, Silas, do you ha can I borrow your, your staff for a moment? <laughs> what are you going to use it for? <laughs> I want to poke this again, but not with my hand. Well, okay. Silas's staff is a religious relic, so he'll just reach <laughs> the staff out and poke at it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, no reaction. Okay. So did it seem like, was there like something that I pressed when I picked it up or was it just, I picked it up and it exploded? You really didn't notice. You just instinctually dropped the thing. Okay. Um, if I hold the bag of holding on the ground, can Silas push it into the bag? <laughs> it's possible. It's a bit of golf. <laughs> Just yeah. like doo, doo, doo. That's, that's bag of holding shenanigans again. again. <laughs> An acrobatics roll to me. Unless you want to do pool style and maybe it'd be a <laughs> sleight of hand, I guess. Odd use for uh, a religious relic, but. <laughs> no, he'll just kind of like hook it and sweep it in. Hockey style. Um... Gotcha. <laughs> I am here. It's just the printer's making noises. <laughs> yeah, 13. 13? Okay. Um, Annie, please make a... Uh, let me see. This would be either sleight of hand or acrobatics yourself as you try to maneuver the bag to make sure that it goes in and doesn't roll by you. Uh, Silas really hopes that, the that it hand. does not go off in the bag. 21. Okay. Yeah, it's the, the the aim was not exactly true, and it doesn't roll very well because it's actually kind of oblong football, but not exactly smooth. It doesn't seem to react until you bring the bag close to it, and then you see the spikes start to grow out as it go, grows closer to you, and you boom, put the bag over top of it, and it is inside. Yep. Got to make note that you have one of those. <laughs> I didn't really think about that. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I'm curious about this, but also, like, right now is not the time to get hurt more. <laughs> no. <laughs> you just spent some hit dice, after all. And I've gotten hurt enough, so I'm going to go back and sit down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Dudek entertains you with some, some random stories of historical elements he's researched. Um, let's see if it's interesting. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go through the, the full live chat here. We're just going to make a history roll. It's an 18. Um, there's a, there's a, a couple of stories. What would you like to know about? What would, if, if Dudek had the opportunity for a, 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 uh, a captive audience AMA. and yeah, it's an AMA. Sure. There you go. It's an AMA. Ask me anything, says Dudek. What would you want to know? What would, what would be the kind of topic you'd want him to talk about? Keeping in mind, it probably has to be something he would know. How he got into his whole fascination with this, the... Argenti saga. Okay. Because, like, that's a very obscure thing. Like... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the general story would be... He would probably leave out some details. He does seem a little bit embarrassed about it, and he does admit that some of it he can't say um, for the protection of the other members of the network he, he works with. Um but it was finding a single page from one of the journals 
one of the Argente Sagex journals, that described a um, an extraplanar geography that he had never even conceived of, but yet seemed to be confidently written. Uh, and it was discovering that inside another book, which led him on this journey. Cool. Medrick is, mo is mostly smiling and nodding because he doesn't understand everything. But. Okay. It's just one of those like very niche things that how even did you figure this out? <laughs> yeah, it takes him an hour to say those few words. Essentially, as the story goes longer and there's a lot of daring do. He was much younger at the time and um, he had found a, a, a you know, it found a, a hidden uh, room one one place, but it was full of booby traps and he barely got out alive and um he wished, from then on, he decided he would, if he was ever going to go on an expedition, he would have an, uh, an assistant, which he's still looking for the proper assistant. Oh, so we make good assistants temporarily, I guess. Um, I think I'm more the assistant here than you, but uh, I appreciate <laughs> the sentiment. The storm seems to start abating. Medric, as you've been focusing on this this emblem for a while... Uh, it does seem to, at first, kind of loosely ad adhere, and you notice on the back of it, there's sort of little little hooks, almost like teeth, that slowly kind of sink in into the armor, uh, and now it seems fully uh, uh, bonded to the armor. Um, with a small experimentation, you find that you can remove it and put it on, on or, and reattach it. Uh, now that it's bound to you, that first binding okay. takes a while, but it can be it can be essentially detached as an action and reattach to something else as another action. So it does take a couple of moments to do it, but you could move it around. Um, it's still only bound to you even if you can move it. Um, cool. And uh, did you get the text of that? I can send you, um, essentially, if you look up Guardian Emblem, um, okay. it's within Tasha's book. Um, you'll find it there. Um, but if With you need the more rest detail. of... With the rest okay. of that rest, do I have a chance to use another hit die? Uh, for I'll what say, I lost from I'll the hot. <laughs> sure. One more hit <laughs> die is available to people if they want it. Uh, and in fact, Dudek what, is going to... What was the choker called earlier? Like that necklace that makes it easy to breathe or that makes me breathe? A necklace in of adaptation. Um, that is also attunement. So it takes okay. an additional hour focusing just on that to to bond to it. I figured that's what I would have done for the first hour. Uh, by now, the strength has worn off, however. Oh, That's okay. I'm still strong. <laughs> and now I'm even stronger because I got because I got two magical items, whereas before I had none. I'm going to have him do... Uh, two. So how badly wounded is he? Just checking on Dudek here. Uh, oh, not too bad. Oh. He will expend some hit dice. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. Okay. All right. Uh, in fact, he can't go above his maximum. <laughs> Wait, what is his maximum? Back up to full. All right. Um, the storm does seem to come to a conclusion. You can still kind of hear little pebbles and rocks being thrown about, but at least does not seem to be as bad. Um, Gosh will go tentatively towards the front of the cave and kind of look out, then look back and gesture for you to follow. Sounds like a plan, boss. All right. I'll follow cautiously. Mm -hmm. Silas takes up the last point. Okay. Um, I'll be right you... behind Gosh. Okay. Um, Dudek somewhere in the middle. Sensibly enough. Um, actually, he's still kind of telling part of the story to Medric. He's kind of sidling up by Medric and just continuing to talk about the story and relate glory days of older times mm -hmm. and... A few of the things he did when he was even younger and a little more uh, impulsive and 
Um, there was this time he found uh, an, an ancient Ignean temple that had been long lost, oh. and uh, it had been long since sacked, and there was nothing but some ancient symbols. Uh, and as you're walking along, um, I'll have uh, each of you make a perception check, Medric, because Dudek is distracting you, you actually make it a disadvantage. Uh-oh. <laughs> You mean Ignian symbols? What? There's 11 and 14, so that's an 11. Okay, it looks like a... Did you pick up any, any of the symbols? You still have them with you? Um, I, I wrote everything I have ever encountered down. It's back in my library. I'm not sure which shelf it's on now. It was a long time ago. Okay, but um, the symbol on this uh, Jardin emblem, or emblem, is that a previous Ignis symbol? Do you know, or...? Doesn't look like it to me, but I haven't seen them all. Your people tend to be rather... About some things very quiet. About most other things very loud. That's not untrue, but... <laughs> <laughs> so as you're moving I suppose along, I can always ask him later if it's one of his. You could. Um, Silas... Okay, so Annie is right behind... Uh, oh yeah, Gosh. Gosh. A check. Um, it's Gosh, me, Medric, and Dudek, and Silas. Okay, I don't need that open anymore because you guys know what that is. You know what that is. Uh, there he is. Have him make his perception check as well. You kind of get this sense that whatever Gosh is seeing, he's not seeing the same thing as you. There's some some trail he's following that his senses can pick up that yours can't. Um, from your position in the back, um, Silas, um, you're kind of looking around at this particular valley you're moving through. Uh, and the walls and side of the valley seem to be freshly scoured. That storm just came through. That makes sense. But it looks different. Um, it's not just scoured as in scraped clean, but you start to pick out little elements of, um, like, pits in the walls of rock. Um, small ones, about the size of your hand, that look like they've been sort of carved out of the side of the rock. Um, but you're not quite sure what to make of that unless you take a closer look. Um, Annie... As you're watching Gosh moving forward, and Gosh is kind of eye, eye level, um, Gosh raises their hand to point at something up ahead and is about to take a step when you look as you're raising your head up and just under where Gosh is going to stand, or going to step next, you see another football-shaped rock lying on uh -oh. the ground. I'm going to grab him by the shoulder-ish no. and try to pull him back. So that'll give him advantage on his dexterity saving throw. Um, as I, I say shit. <laughs> uh, as um, you notice when their foot gets close to the rock, the spikes start to immediately come out. You've seen this happen before. You pull them back and the thing explodes out into those spikes. Um, but That's what we have in the bag now. Gosh is now, <laughs> uh, now uh, safe from it. And then very quickly, the, the uh, spikes recede back inward. Um, God, who puts those there? And as you're kind of looking along um, and looking up, a, up above and up front, you notice that there are numerous of these uh, kind of half buried in the sand up ahead. And what's now sandy soil, what was rock, probably chewed up by the storm. Um, you're going to have to carefully pick your way through here, you think. What would you like to do? Uh, you said there was a pit that was dug out of a, a rock. Out of the wall, yeah. Out of the like wall? Indentation. Silas will check that out. Okay. Watch out for spiky footballs. Yeah. Um, Silas turns on his magic vision. Is the spiky <laughs> football magical? It is not. Hmm. Oh, shit. Silas says, well, whatever that is, whatever that is, it's not magic. Not my kind of magic anyways um does that mean it's natural i wonder maybe. if you were made i mean it could be an earth elemental 
Is it similar to Graveler? Yeah. I mean, maybe. Because Graveler like comes from a ball, then he erupts into this big hulking monstrosity that assists us greatly. Yeah. I mean, hulking monstrosity in a good way. <laughs> from your perspective, I mean, the only the only similarity is they both seem to be rock and slightly and somewhat round when they're smaller, but it's hard to tell any more than that mm. at this point. Um, you carefully make your way over to the uh, to the wall, the side wall of this this cavern or this um, yeah um, canyon. Uh, I will have you make a perception check. Okay, he's not sticking anything of his into the hole. Okay. He's just going to take a look. Okay, uh, nine. I will, I will have you make a dexterity saving throw. Looking with his eye holes. Um, as you can barely see one sticking out of the uh, ground. Is it magic? It is not magic. <laughs> then I got a four. Um, <laughs> Those spaghettios. As it pierces up through your foot for ten piercing damage, as you didn't realize you were stepping right on the edge of one of these that was half, mostly buried in the ground. Once it spikes out, it kind of pops up to the surface of the ground. It's easy to avoid at that point. Um, and all of you can make a, let's call it a medicine check, while Silas is overlooking at this, this indentation on the wall. Um, the thing that you notice about the indentation right away, Silas, is although on a smaller scale, it actually doesn't look that different from the end of the cavern you were in. It looks as though it's been sort of ground into. Yeah. No. Silas is moving away from it and back to the path. Um, uh, so it looks as like... He's, Sorry, go ahead. He's, uh, he's going to use a healing word from the ring. Okay. Um, looks like the highest on the medicine roll was 12. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, that looks like it would be a very, very nasty wound from these things. Yeah, let's not touch them. Um, is that for your healing, I'm assuming? Yep. Ouch. Oof. All right. You can see the path up ahead, but it's going to take you a long time to get through it. Do you want to just try to sneak through it or to carefully make your way through it? Or you have anything else that might allow you to overcome this obstacle? Unless we have some sort of flying, I think it's cautiously, slowly make our way through. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to use... Hmm? Sorry, go ahead. So, just to make sure I understand. So the things, the, sp the spikes don't like fly out, they just... They, they stayed concentrated near near the ball? They come out of the ball itself, and they extend about a foot and a half in all directions. So about a three-foot span by the time it's done. Okay. And then they shoop, go back into it. Um, but they do seem so to, it, it, from the evidence from Silas's, once they've done that, they basically are unburied at that point and can be seen. Okay. So I'll just slowly, like, I'm assuming my, my Warhammer is, like, at least four feet long or three and a half feet long. Probably. So I'll just, like, poke that on the ground in front of me as I... Move forward very slowly. Uh, well, I remember poking them doesn't do anything. Oh, but I mean it'll like it'll it'll unearth them if there is one, so that, that way at least we can see it. Oh, right. maybe. Like maybe it, it would, would you it rather use Silas poking it with a stick earlier didn't, but when it got close to me holding the bag, it did. Okay. Hmm. So it might need to be a certain distance from a person. Yep. No, Silas is like, yeah, let's just uh, creep our way forwards. Okay. Creeping slowly. Going to move slowly? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, each of you make a dexterity saving throw with advantage. 18. Oh. That's... <laughs> oh, Two 18s and a 16, then. Um, I think that 
Annie has evasion too, does she not? I think so. Because that would half damage from any area effect, which is essentially what this is. Okay. Well, she got she got an eighteen um, anyway. Uh, yeah, but uh, that halves the damage. Mm. Uh, basically, you're moving through a very dense field of these. Um, so those of you who at uh, a move my difficulty here. Uh, yeah, 12 or higher. Um, you take half damage, and it takes a quarter damage if you get higher than that. If you get 12 or lower, you take uh, the seven points of piercing. So half damage would be three. So half would three. be three. And a so... quarter would be half of that, which is one. Perfect. Which is weird math, but there you go. That's d and round by it's, math. It's not weird math, it's funky math. <laughs> <laughs> so That's what we call it at work. <laughs> uh, anybody care to describe how they're moving through this, or I can I can try to describe it? If not... Just slowly and carefully and yeah. occasionally stepping on something. So, it does I'm taking appear... it kind of like a, a slightly like a dance, like being careful of where my feet are. Okay. Um, I feel like um, I'm just keeping uh, my shield in front of me and poking the drum of a hammer. <laughs> do you want to have Dudek roll as well as Gosh? Uh, Dudek got a 20. That's pretty good. And Gosh got a 23. Wow. So both of them are pretty light on their feet. Um, they do take some damage, but not that much. Um uh, Dudek might have evasion as well. Uh, that is an interesting question. Uh, he does not. Not at his level. Um, I do have to reread his abilities, though, because they are funky, and I always forget what they are. All right. Um, as you're moving through, it becomes clear that the the floor of this is utterly littered with these uh, every foot or two. So it's almost, it is impossible to avoid just walking through, even if you're careful, uh, because you'll be close to one or the other. Uh, however, you are careful about it, so you're jumping pretty quickly. Uh, occasionally, you jump from one and then find you've landed on another, which means you're jumping from another, which means that even though you're trying to take it slow, it's as much hot foot as anything else. Um very quickly you do discover what you've kind of already deduced is it is based on proximity to a living being. Um, they do not react to rocks. They do not react. And you probably try a bunch of things like throwing rocks at them and trying to trigger them. Otherwise, it only seems to react to living beings coming closer, which is very strange. Um, and there are dozens of these that are littered along this particular point. Um, finally, it seems like you come to a point where they, there aren't any more. And you hear this, this sound of kind of almost like rubber moving on stone as you kind of come to the other side and you're taking your breath and you look around and you see that there is something which has taken up the center part of the valley from here. It looks as though it is a pile of rocks that have been built up into a fort, rough fort, um, about three and a half feet tall, um, carved out of the, the wall of the valley. So they've kind of uh, excavated into the wall and dragged the rocks out to build this space. And as you watch, you see just popping up over the head, or over the top rather, of the, of the wall, one strange purplish um, multi-fanged mouth, which kind of about, about a foot across, not terribly big, kind of writhing up and down. And then as you kind of take a moment to, to feel more confident about the situation, you see one of those large, um, uh, worms from above dive down, drop off bits of something. You're not really sure. It didn't look organic. It looked almost like bits and pieces of the sky, bits and pieces of 
metal and rock into what you now come to sort of realize this nest of worms. Right directly in the pathway of this valley. Oh, it's babies. Yep. Uh, and Gosh it. looks uncertainly at it and at you, but then kind of gestures that beyond this is where you need to go. So how wide is the valley that we're in? At this point, about 30 okay. feet wide. Okay, so it's a, it's just a big cleft in the rocks. Um, so we can't just go around. <laughs> there is space to go around, you think. But you'd have to go pretty close to the edge of the wall. The 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 nest, for lack of a better term, reaches about 25 feet across the, the space. There's about five feet on the other side, which hasn't been taken up. And you do imagine it's kind of like they just clawed at the wall enough, created a cave in there, dragged all the stone back out and kind of put it into a rough uh, circular pile. The large worm, after depositing perhaps food for the younglings, then seems to fly back up into the sky. Well... Uh, our best chance to get past it is while that thing's flying away. Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, what to the wall? Yeah, you guys maybe sneak first. I'll pull up the tail end of it because I am not good at this. I'm also not good at this, but my cloak is. Wait, no, my cloak isn't gray. My cloak is red. About this. Oh boy. All right. So flat to the wall. Flat to the wall. Oh, wait it. a second. Maybe if we move really slowly, they won't notice us. Uh, actually, uh, Silas looks at the staff and then goes, ha, ah, taps it on the ground and pass without trace. Ha. Okay. Um, is that, is that enough for everyone? Is it, uh, six people? Ahead? Um, well, it's, uh, allies that I choose that stay within 30 feet of him. Oh, right, right. So as long as they stay within 30 feet, they get plus 10 to their stealth roll. Nice. Yeah. Um, that sort of weird, uh, well, how do, how do you describe it? What does it look like when you're, you're a goddess grants you this power? Don't call her a goddess. She works for a living. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Now, it's probably like a mist that kind of goes out. Like, instead of shadows and darkness like we had in the other game, uh, this would be more like a, a misty covering that makes it harder to hear and see people inside. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a little bit unnerving at first as it sort of flows like a heavy uh, morning mist over the ground over each of you and kind of hangs in the air surrounding around Silas. But after a moment, the effect dissipates so that you don't get obscured looking out, but you're fairly certain that anyone looking towards you would be uh, would be having some difficulty sensing you. Nice. Just stay within 10 paces, and uh, it, it, this will help. Okay. Any other preparations before you try this? A quick prayer to Ignis. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you could guidance yourself. You could guidance yeah. yourself. I or will. Someone, or someone else if you chose. Probably myself because I kind of radiate heat and light. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, yeah, actually, that is true. Did we ever determine whether that affects your stealth? No, but I'm just not a very stealthy character. <laughs> <laughs> I have zero for stealth. Uh, I'm assuming you can kind of mentally suppress that if you want to. Yeah. It's, it's something, it's kind of like one of those things where, you know, you. It's like holding habit. your breath. <laughs> yeah, you have a ha Yeah, exactly. You have a habit that's always on and you can go, okay. <laughs> um, but it would be the kind of thing where if you're not thinking about it actively, yeah, you'd uh -huh. light up like a candle. All right. Um, let's see. Is there anything else he can offer there? Um, sort of. No, that wouldn't help. Um, I was 
contemplating whether Dudek would use levitate, but <laughs> kind of puts you up way too high in the ground or way high up the, up the air. Um, it's useful in certain circumstances for sneaking, but not quite this one. Not if there's mm -hmm. flying worms that are bound to eat you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, this is going to be individual stealth checks. Order will be important. So what's the order? It's basically going to be in a single file going right, be right beside this, this nest. I don't but, mind going first. Oh, yeah, okay. Silas is last. Keeping in mind, actually, keeping in mind that Silas can't be last. He needs to go in the middle. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll be direct, direct in the middle then. Okay. So Annie's first. Who's next? And you can say Dudek or um, Gosh if you want. Uh, Dudek. We got to make sure that he gets through. Gosh also needs to get through because he's our guide. <laughs> um, is it uh, um, Silas at that point then? Yeah, Silas will be third. Uh, Medric and, or Gosh? And then Gosh, Medric? Yeah, I'll be last. Okay. That way if I botch the roll, then it's like everybody who's in front of me can still get to go through without drama or damage. All right. So, beginning with Annie, let us make a oh, stealth well. check plus 10. Stealth. Um, so the minimum that I can roll with the plus 10 is 22. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I will say if you if you get a nat 20, uh, mm -hmm. actually if you break 25, so you're probably going to do that, then I will give one other person advantage. You get the okay. choose Perfect. Perfect. Oh, geez. 24. Okay. <laughs> Rolled a three. Oh, no. Rip. So unfortunately, you don't get to get, give someone else advantage. I think I said 25, didn't I? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you, you clearly make it through without much difficulty. As long as no one else screws up, so far so good. Next for Dudek. Dudek is... No, no, just for... I, I know I, I can get through. Are we moving slowly still, or are we... That's trying to get past You don't this. see yeah, any think... more of those rocks on the ground here? I'm mo moving as quietly as I can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think technically if we're stealthing, we're at half speed anyways. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, Dudex up next. Not a great skill. Uh, let's see. Does he have anything else he can do? Don't think so. His spells lend to a lot of other things that have nothing to do with this. Uh, and I don't think any of his features. Uh, one moment as I check that. Uh, nope. Uh, okay. He's got some neat things. I should really have him do other things, but he's not really good at this. So, just with the plus 10 and his own bonus, uh, that is an 8, which is modified to an 18. Nice. Seems good so far. Next up is Silas. Twelve total. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, on that one. Oof. Oof. Uh, and with that, um, describe how uh, Silas, unfortunately, while he having the best of intentions and the best of spells. Uh, does not uh, manage to make it through stealthily. Well, uh, as we're moving over the narrow uh, path at the side of the thing, uh, uh, Silas with his big curved shell shield, uh, it starts. To, the shield starts to scrape against the side, and so Silas whips around and puts his back to the wall, but then starts to fall forwards, shouts out, shit! And then catches his balance. So he doesn't fall anywhere, but, uh, yes. And then in that moment of, like, they didn't hear me, right? No nothing noticed that, right? With, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> Gosh standing right shit. behind you, <laughs> and Dudek kind of turning around and looking at you with some concern. Uh, and then Dudek looks 
upward over your head as one of the baby worms is rearing up over to take a look at what's going on. Don't move. Um, I, <laughs> how do you react to this? It, do, it seems like it's interested, but may not have noticed yet. Uh, I'm going like this. Is this a snaky-like thing? It's a worm-like thing. Uh, Stylus is uh, going to use his uh, once-per-day animal friendship with snake-like things. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the a snake-like beast must make a wisdom save or be charmed for the duration. If it has an int of four or higher, this automatically fails. Um, okay. Describe what this looks like when when uh, when Silas tries to reach out to this thing, as if it is a a a fellow snake. He hey, uh. Snake. Well, um. He starts saying something in a very sibilant S heavy uh, language. Uh, and people can, at, while he's doing this, can clearly see his snake tongue. Um, and they probably can't see that his eyes kind of turn snaky, though. Uh, they're not on the right side. But uh, yeah, he's just going, like, he, he he's horse whispering. It's like, Calm. Everything's fine. Your mother will be back soon. And this sort of parcel tongue uh, effect. Uh, make an animal handling check at disadvantage. What is it? Did it make its wisdom save? Or is this because it's not really a snaky? It, it seems to, the magic does not seem to take hold. Okay. But the general calmness, yeah, it doesn't Eight. seem to take hold at, at either. As, as you kind of, there's a moment where it's like, it's hanging over you and it's like, I, I, it's, it's like a snake, right? And then there's a most definitive answer. No, no, no. This is nothing like a snake as two more pop their heads up. Let's roll initiative. Oh shit. <laughs> now it has, they don't seem to have noticed necessarily the rest of you. Certainly not Annie. She's well hidden. Um, But where is my? All right. Fuck! I didn't select my icon, but it rolled really well, though. Well, I'm I'm not using roll twenty directly for this anyway, so it's gonna okay. Be, uh... um, theater of the mind. I I got a green number, so I'm assuming that's a twenty. Ah, it's in that twenty. Yeah. Nice. Do I have time to use the washroom? Because I had like a large tea right before this. <laughs> uh, very quickly. We're not going to go through a long combat yeah. here because we're getting closer. No worries. BRB. Uh, do deck. Uh, looks like we got a five from Silas and a 14 from, uh, Annie. Um, and naturally Medrick goes first as <laughs> he stepped out of the room. <laughs> um, I'll repeat this one when, uh, Nax comes back, but this is not a combat in the traditional sense. This is to determine sequence of actions. Um, if you choose to make it a pitched combat, you can, but do keep in mind these things are enormous. Um, they can squish us. That would be very bad. And plus, three of them have poked their head up. Are there more? You're not sure. Uh, and then there's Mama overhead. So, um, And he's just like... <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yep, and that could possibly be what's going on. We'll see. Um, do, 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 uh, oh, 
Oh, these are, yeah, okay. We shall see how this goes out. Um, hopefully you guys have been having fun this little odd session. <laughs> um, decisions, decisions. It's kind of the intent. Um, bringing Dudek is one of those cases of, is he safer with you or is he safer back at home? <laughs> Um, I'm back. Just, just for your information. I don't, uh, I don't trust Tao Zek Riva to not start mind reading him the moment we leave. I mean, I, I don't blame you. He's already done it once. Um, however, he has professed to have you as allies. Uh, just as a, a note, Nax, um, while we are using initiative, it's not necessarily for a strict combat so much a sequence of actions. Okay. Um, uh, we shall see where this goes. Uh, and Medric is up first. So Medric is the oh, right. option to, opportunity to do something. Okay, so the three worms just three heads pop up. up over the top of the wall. And are something that Mark outside? also put uh, also mentioned is that there are three of them, and Mama is somewhere, and these are ginormous. Yeah, yes, these are ginormous. Uh, they 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 um they already we do not want large. to become squished like a worm. Mm -hmm. so By worms. That's just a suggestion <laughs> that a pitched battle may not be the way you want to go, but. Uh, you also are not sure how many of them actually are there. Three of them have taken notice. Uh, let me check. I might have something for this, actually. I just have to, like, review the spell description because it's been ages. Yeah. This is a case where hmm, clever spell use is probably not a bad idea. Clever ability use, whatever you can do. Um, the snake speaking was not a bad idea. These just don't happen to be snakes. Um, they're snake-like, but they don't, they're not, they're an entirely other kind of... Mm -hmm. Creature. I will say my my favorite out of game in another game um, play was we were on a boat. We had one of the like sea elves who could speak to animals and an orca was attacking our lifeboat oh. and I, a properly timed fuck off in a roll 20 <laughs> <laughs> avoided the entire combat. There you go. That's exactly what can happen. Yep. And the animal handling, if you'd rolled high enough, would have been enough to go to, to do the, there, there, nothing to worry about. Everything is fine. We're just going to move on by like small little ants and beetles, nothing of interest. And they went, hey, something's happening. Cool. What is it? I don't know. What's it taste like? They don't really have a long yeah, list of questions they want to ask. It's mostly what's it taste like. It's not the same spell I was thinking of. Of course, the thinking the one the one I was thinking of I, I don't have slotted, but uh, spirit guardians. Okay. So they'll fly around me to a distance of fifteen feet during the duration. Uh, okay, we just because uh... I figured I could like use them as a distraction. <laughs> That's a pretty cool idea. Let me just look up the spell real quick. Make sure there's nothing else I need to take into account. Um, what was that? Uh, just looking up the spell to make sure there's anything else I need to react yeah. to. Yeah, I think they just take damage and they get slowed down. Okay. Um, when you cast a spell, you can designate any number of creatures you can see that are unaffected by it. Presumably, that's the PCs plus Goth, Agosh, and uh, and Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Everybody else takes damage when it is their turn. Okay. Okay. Would they trace it to me or would it just like this? Because like, I can't leave them there, right? They'd be like following me for 15 feet. Uh, they they are around you and they follow you for 15 feet. Yeah, so that's, that, that probably wouldn't be a good idea. Well, it's up to you. Um, where you are right now, it would definitely affect them. You'll okay. be caught in the radius of effect. And I can dismiss them. Right, it's concentration, so I can just like choose to have them disappear. Essentially, yeah. Okay. So are you going All to right. do that? Yep. Okay, what's it look like? What are your spirit guards? They're going to be a bunch of uh, little phoenixes. Just floating oh, cool. around. Flying around. Woo. Diving around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, this spell goes off, and surrounding you now is this this uh uh yeah this whirling dervish of phoenixes very good i'm, I'm gonna like try to, to to like direct them towards where the nest is and not necessarily next to me <laughs> <laughs> okay um well they they literally are surrounding you there's there's not a lot of 
like it is a it is around you and centered on you to okay. protect you. Um, as the the world goes on fire, but thankfully they dodge and weave around Gosh and the rest of you. Uh, and I'm, I still got uh, Pass Without a Trace, too, right? So they'll be like definitely more focused on the Phoenixes uh, than they are. Pass Without a Trace concentration? Silas? Yep. Yeah, I haven't cast it. Oh, anything. sorry. Oh, yeah, that's right. You didn't cast it. No problem. Um, yep, yep. Uh, that goes off, and it does seem to be engaging with them, and you can see the little worm bodies kind of looking towards the uh, the little phoenixes every once in a while, making a snap towards them. It's not their turn, right, yet, so they're not quite affected. So I'll whisper to my friends, go, 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 go. <laughs> okay. Are you moving, or are you going to stay where you're at? I'm going to stay where I'm at. Well, I'm, I'm at the end anyway. Aren't I? That's true. I think. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just shoo them away. <laughs> okay. While they're distracted. Uh, Dudek is up next. Um, Dudek if he wants is to up. move through me, I will flatten against the wall so that he can. He's he's looking very uncertain, but yes, he will edge in that direction. Um, he did okay on his stealth, so uh, they will have to see if they pay attention, see if they notice him, which they probably won't because I believe it was. 22 or some sorry, sorry, something like that uh or wait no his was low. 18 18 okay uh so they're going to oh oh well okay they still might not see nope they notice him <laughs> so one of them will uh will actually no, he's going to disengage. So he's going to move very, Run very away. carefully to not attract any attention uh, and then sneak on by Annie just to be on the other side. So we're going to count him as safe for the moment. Uh, next up is... Annie's up next. Um, I am going to, like, stage whisper to Silas... Get out of there. Um, and use... Basically, um, try to, like, reach out to, like, pull him out. Okay. You are still considered hidden. You rolled well enough, and they couldn't possibly see you. Um, yeah. If that makes a difference. Otherwise, you're just going to help Silas when it's his turn? Yeah. Basi okay. Basically, I'm trying to help people, like, basically yeet people across my shoulder. Um. I will point out that I believe you can do that by just saying something without actually being there. Okay, yeah. Right? Oh, you yeah. Have, you have a special ability for that. Yeah. Just make sure you whisper it. Don't yell it. <laughs> like I said, stage whisper. At this point, Get I out think you could shout it out with signs and flares, and they still wouldn't see. Um, <laughs> Get out of there quickly, and I'm going to back up. Okay. Um, and, yeah, they don't even notice you're there. Uh, I will have them make a perception check with disadvantage to notice you but pretty sure that they can't actually beat your roll um, did it actually huh. doesn't look like it rolled it oh, I'm going to assume they can't beat a ridiculous I think it was uh, it was a 24 and that was a low roll actually they can't beat that um, so I'm going to consider Annie to be free uh, next up is Gosh. And just for technical reasons, I have Dudek behind me. Okay. He would have he would have gone spry a few extra feet. He moves very quick for his age too. I'm probably about like thirty feet down, so that there's enough room for everybody to get in. Okay. Gosh's turn. Gosh looks very much afraid. Um. And is just going to make a make a run for it um, has not had a chance to hide there is nowhere to hide so I think just going to run for it so let's see if the one of the worms will react look flying phoenixes uh, which will affect them more on their turn it's not doing it for some reason Just gonna make a roll. Uh, Sixteen. That is going to hit. Uh, yes, it is going to hit. So, 
One of them will take a chunk out of Goth. No. Uh, for five points. And now Goth will try not to be eaten. Uh, let's see. Dexterity saving throw. You got this. Oh, that's not good. No. Uh, as Goth tries to sneak on by and the creature just launches out, kind of grips on with its forward teeth and then uses the rest of the momentum of its body to whoomp, chomp down on Gosh. And then kind of pull back a little bit. Gosh has been swallowed. Uh, can we get him out? <laughs> you can certainly try uh, when it is your turn. So next up is... Oh, next up is them. So they have to make saving throws? Is yep. it dexterity? Uh, I think it's wisdom. I had it open earlier, but I just forgot it instantly, because that's what I do. Well, either one of those is the same roll. Wisdom saving throw. Okay, that is a minus one, a seven, and a three. So they all fail. Okay, so they all take 3d8... Uh... Yeah, so 3d8 radiant damage. Yeah. Let me roll that. Is that plus modifier? No. I'm assuming I don't add my modifier to this. No. Uh, not usually. Oof! Decent numbers, I guess. That nice. Is, yeah. Okay. And uh, sorry, was there any other effect? Um, do do charge the turn makes was fail fails uh, of either radiant or necrotic. In this case, it's radiant yeah. damage. Uh, and yeah, that's the only effect. So it's just on going on there. Uh, okay. How dumb are these creatures? They are really dumb. They should spit out, uh, that, uh, that one should spit out what it's got in its mouth and go after the firebirds instead. Uh, I think. it did take more than 10 damage. So it now has to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, okay. So we'll go ahead and say that they are going to, one of them's engorging something he doesn't have to eat. Um, one of them will go after, uh, actually one after Medric and one after Silas. Um, sorry, if it's, is it, yeah, it makes the saving throw at the end of its turn. So technically, even if it, if it eats you, it might still spit you out. It's kind of weird. So against Silas, 23, yikes. And nine against Medric. That does not hit. Uh, so I need Silas to make a dexterity saving throw. You got this. <laughs> Probably not. Um, you take eight points of piercing damage, and you are swallowed. Uh, however, they now have to make constitution saves against a lot. So the one that has uh, Gosh in his mouth... Constitution save fails. The one that has uh, Silas failed. So let me describe how this happens. There are these phoenixes flying all around and they're kind of biting in and diving through these strange worms. Uh, one of them still kind of seems, maybe it, maybe it knows, maybe not. It takes a swipe at Medric but manages to miss. The other one, uh, kind of the, the initial one that had its head up first, uh, dives forward and just engulfs uh, 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 Silas, but all the phoenixes start piercing and diving through these creatures to the point where they both kind of rear back and spit out Gosh and uh, Silas onto the ground. Uh, you are prone, but you don't take any additional damage. Uh, and yeah, they're pretty dumb. Um, so it is Gosh's turn. Gosh is going to run. <laughs> Wasn't already Gosh's turn? 
Yeah, it was already Gosh's turn, so we can't do anything yeah. yet. Um, it is Silas's turn, however. Okay. Well, I've been slimed, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you've seen the inside of these things. It's not much better than the outside. In fact, it's worse. Mm. Uh, Silas is going to stand up. Uh and he is going to move, but first he's going to fire off a new spell that he has called uh -oh. Synaptic Static. Uh oh, it'll work as long as they have an int of of two or higher. Oh, uh, oh. And if they have an int of one, then uh, it won't work at all. Uh, but they're babies. They mm. are pretty instinctual. They have an int. Mm -hmm. of one. <laughs> Well, then this doesn't do anything as he fires a massive psychic energy uh, ball at them. Um, and then he uh, is going to be hoofing it. So I kind of imagine this 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 ball. It's like one of those scratch squiggles they put on uh, on animation sometimes. They kind of just, you know, weird kind of yeah. uh, thing. And it goes out and the worms kind of all look at it. And then they all look back at you. Because they're not smart like, enough to go. Well. Actually, one of them will try to eat it. Nothing happens. That should have worked. Uh, and then, yes, he will run. Okay. Uh, two of the... Oh, they all have the reactions back. Um, yeah, because their just turn went. just ended. So they are going to all take a strike at you, because... Hmm, that looks tasty. Uh-oh. Um, first one is a 15. Nope. Second one is a dirty 20. Yeah, that will. Uh, and that's going to mean another uh, saving throw. As you take nine piercing damage. Okay, what kind of save? Uh, dexterity save. Yay, one of my worst. Fifteen. Uh, Fifteen is enough. You manage to Ooh, avoid yeah. being being engulfed by it. Uh, and then the third one will take a strike. Twelve misses. Nope. So you manage to, to uh, hoof it out the remainder of your movement, which is probably twenty or fifteen. Um, um you have to stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, yeah, that'd be fifteen. Okay, I'll say you're not quite out of their immediate danger like the other two are. Um, but oh, okay. Oh, interesting. They have rules on if it, if the thing dies, you still have to work your way out. Um, but you've managed to move enough out. Brings us top around with Medric. All right. Um, are they still just? I'm assuming they're they're still very much distracted by the flying phoenixes. They are. They aren't moving very far. You get the feeling that they don't move very far, and they're in their nest. So this, this is a safe place. Why is why is Bernie a Bernie thing making making safe place not happy? I don't know. I'm All right. So out. they've also been distracted by a fleeing Silas that they tried to eat. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> So um, I'll keep up the distraction with the uh, spirit guardians, and I'll just casually move, like slowly move away. Okay. How far are I still you got moving? Because as soon as you move further than fifteen feet, yeah, um, uh, then they st they are no longer within range of the spirit guardians. So I'm like hugging the wall, hugging the wall, and once I'm at about like fourteen feet, <laughs> I'll I'll drop the spell, but still stay against the wall and see what they do. Okay. Um, you could just leave the spell up in case they come closer. But won't they follow me, though? Maybe. Although, yeah, okay, I'll just keep... They might follow you regardless. It's entirely possible that they're going to Yeah, but they won't be focused on me, though. Okay, so the I'll just keep... The other tasty things that have moved off in this direction, they'll go, hey, wait, they all went that way. And you tap... But these are not tasty things. These are like jalapeno things. Well, so... <laughs> Silas was pretty tasty, and Gosh was pretty tasty. Yeah, I'll just keep, I'll, I'll keep moving away, but I'll keep the spell up. Okay. They have no reactions, so they don't uh, jump back at you. Uh, you're able to kind of casually just sort of walk away. <laughs> All the rest are like, gotta do this thing, gotta, gotta run. You're like, yeah, mm -mm, uh huh, yep. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna say you're safe for the moment. I think I was the last one to pass. Uh, you are, but Gosh has not had a chance to do anything yet. And we still have. Uh, Dudek can do something, potentially. 
Uh, I don't think he has a lot of spells that would apply. Health gosh. <laughs> um, actually, he can. What is his strength? Oh, his strength is pitiful. Nonetheless, um, he can actually, because uh, he has enough movement, uh, especially if he focuses his key, to run in, drag Gosh out, and then be out, out safe. So all of you are safe from this now. What are your actions? Everyone is in the tunnel. We move. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, you're in. So the, should you're I... still in the valley, but. Um... Okay, so we're we're still visible from the air. Oh yes. Okay. Uh, is there any creatures Danny, that are nearby? Can see where she's gone to. Are there any like nearby creatures we can see, or should I like drop these guardians? Uh, aside from the worms, who are, are are kind of almost like they're sniffing the air. Um. Actually, all of you can make a perception check. And I'll make one for... Because I don't want to attract the big worm on top. <laughs> that would be bad. Well. Yeah, my pass without trace is down. Net 20. Okay. Yeah, kind of uh, you first and then a second later, um, Dudek. Um, both kind of realize they have no eyes. And at a certain point, they seem to no longer have any clue of where you've gone. Okay. The point seems to be about 30 Ooh. feet. As, as someone with, with blind sight, do I kind of clue into that as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, after they mention that, they're sort of like, oh, right. They don't see normally. They right. see in a different way. Okay, so I'll keep these up just in case we get attacked by something else. But it, they're only going to last like eight more minutes at this point. Okay. Um, and while there's an agitated nest of, uh, of plane eater worms back there, I'm sure that'll be fine later. Um, <laughs> That's future us's problem. <laughs> uh, as present you makes your way down the valley um, quite some distance, uh, probably about a half a kilometer by the time you stopped running, uh, and then realize you probably should have been looking for those other rocks, but those don't seem to be here, thankfully, so no spikes yep. in the feet. Until you find uh, what looks like a metal um, tube slightly sticking up out of the ground. The visual the players can think of is when you see a, uh, a manhole which has, uh, with a manhole cover, which hasn't been surrounded by the, the pavement yet, it kind of sticks up like a metal, metal top, that's what you see. And on the very top of this inscribed is the, uh, the uh, clever eye symbol of the... Um, the Argenti Sagax. And at that, um, between Gosh and, and Dudek, um, it's not hard to figure out how this mechanism works. Uh, in fact, it's not really, it's not a, a complicated nor magical mechanism, really. It's a mechanical one. Um, but between what Gosh already knows and what Dudek can, can figure, um, they quickly open it up. Once more, it slides off to the side, still pinioned by one pin, Inside, there is a ladder down. Nice. Do you go in? At least this one has a ladder. I mm -hmm. go in. Go, go, go. Okay. I'll grab a pebble, cast light on it, and, like, drop it down the shaft. Okay. As soon as it hits about three feet, it just vanishes. Well, and that's... you remember that most of these portals have a, uh, a point where nothing travels through. No light or no sight can travel through. Oh, right. Um, well, it means we're going to a new... New realm, anyways. That's good. Hopefully it's the, the realm where Melora and Graveler are. You drop through the floor, or drop through the hole, climb downward. There's a slight change in orientation as you find yourself climbing down to get in, but then find yourself shifting to climbing across, and you come out through a hole. This hole, this hole by the way, is probably about five feet across. It's a very large, okay. uh, large opening. Uh, but it goes from moving downward to moving across as you find yourself kind of crawling out um, into a room. And I won't get into the details today, but essentially you find yourself in, if you go to uh, roll 20, uh, you'll find, I'll just switch the map quickly for those at home. You find yourself in what looks like a triangular room. Stone on the floor, two large walls to either side, 
which look like they have some sort of um, center things. You uh, have some sort of uh, uh, symbols on them. And there is in the center a column, which seems to have a, uh, a base, a round base, with multiple symbols on it as well. Cool. And that's where we'll pick up next time, as you enter another stage. Uh, thanks very much to my players for joining me today, and hopefully anybody who's been watching at home or watched us on YouTube, you can see us at youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for LOTDI or The Great Confusion or a number of playlists that's under. You can also find us streaming every other Sunday if everything aligns <laughs> on Twitch. If people that's... remember to wake up. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of, of technical and scheduled issues with the last few weeks. Uh, but twitch.tv slash ENCAF1, you'll find us there on Sunday afternoons. Uh, once more, uh, thank you very much to my players. And I hope you guys had fun. It's a weird little session. We did. Thanks for running. And yay, we actually did have someone in the chat earlier. Oh, nice. Awesome. Nice, to, nice to see everyone. All right. Well, that's it. I'm having, oh. I'm having feline problems right now. Well, <laughs> on that <laughs> note, <laughs> see you guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye. See ya.